Hey everybody, hope you're doing well on this Saturday night. Welcome into another installment of our Road to Gold series as we take a look back at some of the best Sod Poodles games from the 2019 Texas League Championship season. Sam Levitt coming to you from not my apartment, but here in our production room at Hodgetown for tonight. Joe Corbacero, our executive director of our Road to Gold series, is uh, behind me running the controls tonight. As we come to you live on this Saturday night, we take a look again at some of the best games Amor played in 2019 and tonight we'll take a look back at July 22nd 2019 a wild back and forth affair that Amarillo would go on to win by a final of nine to eight in 11 innings one of the more dramatic wins Amarillo had in their 2019 season first and foremost hope you and your family are doing well hope you're staying healthy in this very difficult time for our community and our nation and again here our goal tonight is to provide a little bit of entertainment give you something to watch on this Saturday night so grab a beverage grab dinner grab the kids grab the family and uh, get ready to enjoy this one tonight really uh, from what people have told me from what fans told me last season one of the more memorable endings one of the more memorable games Amarillo played all year in 2019 so let's set the stage for this one tonight this was the final game of a four-game series between the Northwest Arkansas Naturals and the Amarillo Sod Poodles. Amarillo had won on the Sunday before this game. This was a, a Monday night, this ball game, on July 22nd. They won that game 7-0, lost on Saturday 14-3, and won on Friday in the C series opener 12-8. So they were trying to get a series split against Northwest Arkansas as they came into this game. Uh, actually, I... I take that back. Bet back. They uh, were trying to go three of four in this series against Northwest Arkansas on the mound for Amarillo in this one. A guy who made his major league debut earlier in the year for San Diego, left-hander Nick Margavichis on the mound for the Naturals tonight is Brady Singer, very highly touted prospect in the Kansas City Royals system. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this one before we get started. Leading off for the Naturals is left fielder DJ Bird. He's followed by shortstop. Kevin Merrill. D.H. Gabriel Cancel bats third. Khalil Lee in center field batting cleanup. Emmanuel Rivera at third base batting fifth. It's Taylor Featherston at second base batting sixth. Right fielder Anderson Miller batting seventh. Nick Hutchins, the catcher, batting eighth. And Angelo Castellano at first base batting ninth. And again on the mound for the Naturals in this one, right-hander Brady Singer. Meanwhile, for Amarillo, who came in a record of 16 and 14 in the second half, 50 and 48 overall. The Naturals, by the way, 12 and 17 in the second half, 43 and 54 overall. Leading off for the Saudis, left fielder Rodrigo Orozco. He's followed by the DH, Ivan Castillo. Right fielder Edward Olivares bats third. Owen Miller at second base batting cleanup. Luis Torrens behind the plate batting fifth. Hudson Potts at third base batting sixth. Peter Van Gansen at shortstop batting 7th, Kyle Overstreet at first base batting 8th, and Buddy Reed in center field batting ninth. And again, on the mound tonight for Amarillo is left-hander Nick Margavages. He would have a really solid outing in this one. Seven strong innings. Carlos Belin, a couple of really big innings out of the bullpen. David Bednar came in as well. This is a back-and-forth game. Amarillo will trail early. They come back. They actually trail in the ninth inning, trail in the tenth inning, trail in the eleventh inning as well. And they find a way to come back each and every time. And the final swing comes from Owen Miller. This was, I'm telling you, really one of the uh, more memorable games Amarillo played at home last season. And I've spoken to different fans uh, about their thoughts from 2019. And a lot of fans will say this game was maybe the most memorable ending, the most memorable uh, extra inning game the Saudis played in 2019. So we're in for a good one here tonight. Extra innings, Owen Miller, dramatic fashion, really a big time comeback effort from a team that uh, came back so many times in 2019 throughout the season. So sit back, grab a beverage, grab a snack, grab the kids, grab your significant other, whatever you want to do. Sit back and enjoy this Saturday night. And without further ado, let's show you tonight's ball game. From 
the corner of South Buchanan and 8th Avenue, Amarillo Sod Poodles baseball is on the air as tonight the Sod Poodles play the series finale against the Northwest Arkansas Naturals, our starting pitching matchup tonight. On the mound for Amarillo, left-hander Nick Margavichis, and on the mound for Northwest Arkansas, right-hander Brady Singer. Hi again, everybody. Sam Levitt with you on the Sod Poodles radio network. Great to have you with us on this Monday night, wherever you might be tuned in from on 940 AM, the voice of Amarillo, or on any of our other platforms alongside Paul Matney tonight. And Paul McMark just on the mound tonight after Amarillo got a very, very good starting pitching performance. Very, very good would be underselling it. A great pitching performance last night by Lake Bocker. And now Amarillo will try to win this series behind the left-hander Nick Margavichis. Absolutely. And we've talked a lot about how important it is to get ahead with uh, run production, but also with good, solid starting pitching. And, Sam, it is a beautiful evening here on the high plains of Texas. We have something a little bit unusual. You know, we've been playing baseball with temperatures in the mid to upper 90s the last two or three games that we've played here at Hodgetown. But tonight it is 83 degrees. The winds are blowing in from center field directly into the batting area. And uh, so this is a little bit different. We haven't had that kind of a win. Normally our prevailing winds out of the south and southwest. And boy, that means that uh, bar 352 is a popular spot for those home runs. But it is a really, really pleasant evening tonight here at Hodgetown. I'll give you a funny story. I was down in the dugout before tonight's game. Around 5 p.m., I was laying down the cable for our field mic down there. And tonight's starting pitcher, Nick Margavich, just came out. And he uh, just was coming out to see what it felt like out there and he turned to me and he said you know what it's pretty nice out here tonight I said yeah it's not too hot so uh Nick Margavich just liked the temperature. Certainly we do as well as we get ready for baseball here tonight. Margavich is ready to go. Amarillo looking for a series win here tonight. Wearing the camo hometown hero Monday jerseys. One sleeve red, one sleeve blue. DJ Burt leads it off tonight for Northwest Arkansas. As Margavich just looks in out of the windup. And the first pitch of the evening is outside ball one. A fastball at 87. First pitch comes your way tonight at 7.14 p.m. Our game time temperature, 83 degrees. 1-0 is low, and the count now at 2-0. Bird at 2.59, three home runs, eight RBIs, at a base hit last night. In his first action of the series, 2-0, swinging a liner into left field right at Roscoe, who's there. He pulls it in. So a bullet by D.J. Burt, but Roscoe right there defensively tonight. For Amarillo, it is Orozco, Reed, Olivares, left to run in the outfield. Potts at third, Van Gansen at short. Miller at second, Overstreet at first, Torrens behind the plate. And the left-hander out of the Cleveland area, Nick Margavichis on the bump. So here's Kevin Merrill, and the pitch is low and in ball one, a fastball at 89. Series finale here in downtown Amarillo. Amarillo winning on Friday 12-8. They lost on Saturday 14-3. And then a 7-0 win in last night's game. 1-0 grounded over to first. Picked up by Overstreet. He's got it. And he steps in the bag in time. Two up and two down for Mark Avages on only five pitches. Our game time and temperature tonight brought to you by Tudin Totem. Hey, fans, don't forget when the Sod Poodles are home, stop by any area Tudin and Sodom and refill your Sod Poodles Collector Cup for free. We'll see you after the game. Two outs, nobody on. And it brings up the very talented Gabriel Cancel. Lefty on righty and the offering. And that's on the curve. Drops in a strike on one. 73 miles an hour. Cancel a good series, 5 for 13. Batting 258, 16 home runs, and 61 RBIs. 0-1. And it's in for a strike again. Another curve. And the count 0-2. So Mark Avages, who went seven innings, gave up five runs earlier in the homestand against Springfield. Looking very sharp early on. The 0-2, a wave and a miss, strike three. Got Cancel on three pitches and a very quick and easy 1-2-3 opening inning for Nick Margavichis. And he gets through this first inning on only eight pitches. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. Middle of one, Northwest Arkansas nothing, and Amarillo coming up. 
on the Amarillo South Poodles Radio Network. Leading off tonight for your sod poodles, the left fielder number one, Rodrigo Orozco. Beautiful night here at Hodgetown as we go to the bottom half of the first inning. No score between the Saudis and the Naturals, Orozco Castillo and Olivares leading it off against right-hander Brady Singer tonight. Orozco at 255, two home runs and 21 RBIs. First pitch is in for a strike going one. At 93 miles an hour. Nick Margavages, a very quick and easy eight pitch first inning. Pitch to Orozco, rides inside. One and one. Singer making his third start against Amarillo this year. Made one on June 12th, the one on June 19th. One one, low and in. Two and one. One of those outings, three innings and five runs given up. The other, four innings and two runs given up. So both outings have not been. Particularly lengthy, 2-1, low and in, 3-1. and one. Roscoe, 2 for 14 in this series. The infield, outfield straight away will give you that defensive alignment for the Naturals in a moment. 3-1, low ball, 4, he walked him. And that's the way the evening begins for Brady Singer. So Roscoe on first base. Nobody out. And it brings up the red hot Yvonne Castillo. Singer was the 18th overall pick in 2018 out of the University of Florida. Amarillo facing two straight first rounders from the University of Florida these last two nights. Jackson Kowar went last night. Amarillo beat him. And now it's Singer here tonight. Pitch to Castillo, a swing and miss, 0 and 1. Castillo at 347, best batting average in double A. Seven home runs, 47 RBIs, riding an 18 game hit streak. Switch hitter batting left. Singer looks in. Orozco a short lead, held on by Castellano. And the 0 1. Taken on the inside corner, strike two. Fastball at 93. Yvonne, 6 for 14 in this series. A home run, four runs knocked in, and six runs scored. Not a bad three games for Yvonne. Singer comes set. Throw to first base, and Ross go back in safely. Defensively tonight for the Naturals, Bertley Miller. Left her out in the outfield, Rivera at third, Merrill at short, Featherston at second, Castellano. At first base, Hutchins behind the dish, and the right-hander out of Eustis, Florida, Brady Singer on the bump. Now the 0-2, swinging a foul straight back, do it again at 0-2. Singer very, very highly touted. Both guys that... Amarillo's faced in the final two games of this series, Kowar and Singer. These are guys that Kansas City really feels are going to be a big part of the rotation moving forward. Singer comes set, the 0-2. He's fouled away again, left side. And we'll tee it up again at 0-2 on Castillo. No score, bottom one. Roscoe on first base and nobody out. Singer, who has sort of a not herky-jerky motion, but it's not exactly smooth. Now the 0-2, swinging a foul tip into the mitt of Hutchins and a strikeout of Castillo. So one down. Roscoe on first base and brings up the red-hot red Edward Olivares. Singer ranked by Baseball America. Coming into this year, the number one prospect in the Royals organization. Fastball slider, changeup guy. And he's had a, a pretty darn good year. Not as good here at double-A, but fairly good nonetheless. Pitch to Olivares is upstairs, ball one. 
or pardon me, was that called a strike? No, upstairs, ball one. When I looked down, I thought I heard Jeff Gorman <laughs> said, okay, one and oh, it's reset. Olivares digs in the pitch. Swing line, drive, base hit. Up the middle, played back in by Lee. Orozco up to second, and what do you know? Another day, another base hit for Olivares, who is batting over 300 now. First hit tonight for either side. And Paul, the Saudis in business, two on and one man away. Good solid hit by Olivares right up the middle. Olivares came in batting 300, 16 home runs, 65 RBIs. He has three home runs in this series. And we were talking yesterday about him being a very, very good candidate for MVP. Yeah, right now, we've got a long way to go, but certainly in that conversation. First pitch to Owen Miller, in for a strike, Owen 1. Miller at 298, nine home runs and 47 RBIs. Still leads all of the Texas League in total hits with 108. Good early opportunity, two on, one out. Scoreless game, bottom one. Singer comes set. And the 0-1, and a fastball right down Polk Avenue, or I should say Polk Street, and the count 0-2. Had a very leisurely, delicious lunch today on Polk <laughs> Street. <laughs> with uh, the voice of the Naturals, Benjamin Kelly. Now the 0-2, swing and a miss, got him upstairs. A rare strikeout for Owen Miller, and even more rare that Singer got him on three pitches, and he got Owen Miller to chase out of the zone. So two men away here in the first inning. Two on, Orozco on second, Olivares on first base, and Luis Torrens coming up. Very rare that Owen Miller chases pitches out of the zone like that. But that time Singer got him to chase. So here's Torrens, who's at 287. Eight home runs and 41 RBIs. He digs in. Hiked up Navy socks, white pants, camo jersey, blue batting helmet. And the pitch on the way. Fastball. And it's in for a strike going one at 94. Torrens, three for seven in this series. The infield, outfield straight up. Wind blowing in from right center tonight, at least to begin the ball game. 0-1. And that time it looked like the slider taken on the outside corner, a strike 0 2. So Singer, after allowing two base runners, really looks like he's settling down now ahead of Torrens 0 2 after getting Miller on three pitches. Royals really thrilled to get Singer last year at 18th overall, and, and they felt even at that point that they had a steal to get a pitcher they felt was very major league ready at 18th. Sets at the belt, the 0-2, swinging a foul straight back, do it again at 0-2. Sam, the last couple of days we've had some balls bounce off that batter's eye for home runs with that wind blowing in at about 10 to 12. It's going to be a little more difficult to do tonight. One of those home runs, a 421 foot bomb last night by Edward Olivares, the 16th. He's on first, Orozco on second, Owen Sue on Torrens. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. Got him on the slider. That was a beauty. And that's the inning. So three strikeouts in the inning for Brady Singer. No runs, one hit, two left on. End of one. Amarillo nothing and Northwest Arkansas nothing on the Amarillo Sound Poodles Radio Network. Please. Scoreless game against Northwest Arkansas. Left-hander Nick Margavich is back to work. He'll face Lee Rivera and Featherston after a 1-2-3 opening frame. No score, top two. Win now whipping in from center and the pitch to Lee. He's in for a strike, going one fastball at 86. Sam, we remember that marvelous performance by Bacher last night, and we mentioned that he went one, two, three in all but two innings of the first seven. 0-1, oh, 
Swing and a miss. Good pitch low in the zone by Mark Avichis. Change up that time. 0 and 2. Bacher was tremendous last night. Seven and two thirds scoreless innings that matched a career high that, oh, by the way, he set this year. The 0 2 is low in the count now. 1 and 2. Also matched a career high in strikeouts, which was nine, which he also has set earlier this year. In fact, he struck out nine in three of his last four outings. 1 2. Ground ball towards the middle of base hit. Van Gansen and Miller, neither could get to it. And a roller up the middle, a base hit for Lee. And that's the way the second begins for Mark Avichis. The PA here at Hodgetown playing Hava Nagila. How about that? Pitch is on the way to Emmanuel Rivera. No, Mark Avichis throws over to first base and back in safely is Khalil Lee. No score, top two. Rivera at 257, seven home runs and 47 RBIs. Middle infielders Miller and Van Gansen play up the middle. The pitch is in for a strike, 0 one Peter Van Gansen, who's pretty much playing every day now, whether it's at third or short or second or first base, or pitcher. That's true. <laughs> a career zero ERA after that appearance on Saturday. Throw to first again and back in safely is Khalil Lee. We've talked extensively in this series about the Naturals ability and their willingness to run. They lead all of double A in stolen bases as a team with 160. Now the 0-1 in the dirt. One ball, one strike. That is almost 70 more than any other team. The next team, to give this context, is Midland at 92. I mean, that is just insane. And Lee has been one of the main guys stealing bases this year. He has 40 on the year. There he goes. They got him picked off. Throw to Overstreet, throw to second, and he's out at second base. Well, that is a multitude of times now that despite Northwest Arkansas running, Amarillo has picked him off in every single game. I believe Lake Bakker had a pickoff last night. I'd have to look at that, but I know Gore had one. And uh, they had one on Saturday as well. You're right. We've had several during this series, and they're not afraid to run on you for sure. 1-1 one, one, in for a strike, 1-2. and two. So the Naturals, they just run a lot. That doesn't mean they always get there successfully. I mean, they've ran 160 times, stolen those many bases. They've also been caught 46 more than anybody else. One, two in route, and a ground ball towards the middle of base hit. Struck well by Rivera. So some of the sting taken off after the pickoff. But now Rivera on first base, second hit of the inning. And it brings up Taylor Featherston. Featherston, who matched a Northwest Arkansas franchise record with three home runs and seven RBIs here on Friday night. Pitches low and outside, ball one. Correction here on Saturday night. He joined Mitch Canham as the only other player in franchise history with two triples in a game on April 18th against Springfield. So he's setting all kinds of records. 1 0, a swing and a miss. And the count one and one. Scoreless game top two. Rivera on first base and one out. Pitch on the way. Check swing. Did he go? He did. And the count now one and two on Featherston. By the way, our great PR team, the uh, great Saad Poodle's PR man, Shane Phillips and Adam Trailer. They did confirm that there has been one pickoff 
in every game this series. 1-2. Low and outside. Snap throw to first. And, bat not, and uh, back in time is Rivera. And the count now at 2-2. Two and two, So Amarillo has done a very nice job neutralizing that Naturals running game. 2-2 two and two on Featherston. Came in batting 257, 13 home runs, 45 RBIs, pitching the dirt. Smothered by Torrens in the count now, 3-2. and two. Sam, we remember Featherston from Saturday night and that big blowout when he had a career game. Three home runs, went four for five that night. Throw to first base and back and safely is Rivera. Now the thing with this Naturals team is even guys like Rivera can steal a base. They've stolen one as Rivera. In fact, they've got, as the 3-2 comes in, foul the way to it again at 3-2. They've got, count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five different players on their active roster right now. That doesn't include guys that are no longer here that have more than 10 stolen bases. Amarillo's got four, but the highest total on Amarillo's team is Olivares with 23. 3-2, Three, bouncer slowly hit back to Margavages, goes to second low, throw to first base, and it goes off the facing of the first base dugout. They do get the out at second as Rivera is forced out. Good play by Margavages. I didn't think he was going to spin around and throw to second. Got the lead runner, and a good play by Miller at second base to a scoop out that throw, not a good throw to first base. But a fielder's choice by Featherston, and he's on first with two men away. McGavin just did not hesitate at all. Got the ball immediately through to second. And looking at the replay, I'm not sure that a really good throw by Miller would have got Featherston anyway. So here's Miller. Nick comes set the pitch. Low and away ball one. Top two, Amarillo nothing, Northwest Arkansas nothing. Another great crowd here at Hodgetown filing in. Potts in on the grass, 1-0. Low and in, snap throw to first base, a close play, not in time. Ooh. Oh boy, they almost got Featherston leaning. Overstreet applying the tag, and from up here it looked like they might have got him. That was close. Take a look at the replay on MILB TV. And tough to tell with the umpire in the way there, but that was a very close play. Throw to first, and again, Featherston back in. But we mentioned it with Mackenzie Gore on the mound on Friday night. If you are Amarillo, you just have to keep these guys close. No matter if it even feels like you're being silly thrown over so much, you've got to keep them close. 2-0, and a ground ball right in that Left-handed batter's box rolls foul. And the count now 2 and 1. Miller at 252. Three home runs and 22 RBIs. <laughs> 2 and 1. As he comes set. And the pitch. Swinging a high fly ball right field. This one is gone. It is way, way out of here. Well, not so much. It looked like it was going a lot farther. It goes about halfway up the berm. Either way, a two-run homer for Anderson Miller. And Northwest Arkansas takes a 2-0 lead. I think the wind might have knocked it down a bit. But either way, it was out by a, a good margin halfway up that Yellow House berm. And it is a 2-0 Naturals lead on a two-out, two-run home run by Anderson Miller. It looked like it had a chance to go out on the concourse, but I think the wind did hold it up. First pitch to Hutchins, low and away ball one. So Amarillo trailing 2-0 after Miller's fourth home run of the year. 1-0, foul straight back, and the count now 1-1. One one. Mm -hmm. 
One one. And it's outside. Curveball that time. Two and one. Two one. Swing and this one's driven pretty well into left center. Going back, Reed by the warning track. Now he comes in, makes the catch, and that's the inning. So struck well by Hutchins, but not deep enough. In the inning, two runs on three hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Middle at two, Naturals two, Saudis nothing on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. I'm down here with our favorite knockerball challenge game. We've got two guys that are from the fan section on this side. We have two Sod Poodle guys on this side. It's team against team. Partners have to get at least one foot into the pool to get a point. Otherwise, we're going to have a huge collision. All right, guys, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, they're teaming up. We got one. Whoa, one foot, one. No, not yet. No, no. Right, one right there. Fans with one point. Fans with one point. The Sod Squad is undefeated. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that, especially my Sod Squad. Three, two, one, go. It's going to be a big hit. Big hit. Big hit right there. We've got. I don't know what we have. We have nothing. We have chaos. Nope. Point. Side squad. On the ground. On the ground. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. This is the last one. Winner take all, guys. Winner take all. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Who's it going to be? Oh, we got. Oh, wow. That wasn't even close. The fans are going to take their first one. Wait, it's three to one. Sod squad over fans. We're going to send it back to you. Thank you, Dennis. For over 30 years, Pride Home Center at Northeast 24th and Grand has been serving the good people of the Panhandle area with quality service, advice, and brands you can trust. Pride Home Center, Amarillo's only locally owned home center. We go to the bottom of the second. Amarillo trailing 2 0. It's Potts Van Gansen over straight due up against Brady Singer. First pitch to Huddy is in for a strike 0 and 1. Slaughter that time at 83. Two run home run by Anderson Miller in the top half of this inning, giving the Naturals a 2 0 lead. And the pitch is in for a strike 0 and 2. Potts batting 229, 10 home runs and 42 RBIs. He has been red hot as of late. Last seven games batting 440. Now the 0-2, swing and a miss, got him upstairs at 94. Three pitch strikeout for Hudson Potts and each of the first four outs for Singer have been via the K. One away and it brings up Peter Van Gansen. Sun going down beyond the third base side. First pitch is low and in to Van Gansen, ball one. Paul, they just gave me a T-shirt to throw out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, getting delivery now. 1-0 is a swing and a miss, one and one. If you ever come out to Hodgetown, I usually, uh, during the Barnes Jewelry T-shirt sling, throw out a T-shirt to the fans of Loas and yeah. Tonight I forgot mine. Now sometimes I forget to get the shirt, and no big deal, <laughs> just don't do it. This one popped up, third base side. Rivera waiting under it patiently, and he puts it away for out number two. So two up, two down. Bottom two, Amarillo trailing two zip. First baseman, Here's Kyle Overstreet. Overstreet. And I just had a, a member of the Sod Squad come and uh, give me a T-shirt to throw out. Very nice. You draw some attention from these folks down the first base line. Now this you. this looks like a bit of a uh, a nicer T-shirt than we usually throw away. Is that why you're putting it in your briefcase right now? <laughs> first pitch low and away <laughs> to Overstreet ball one. Well, not nicer. Maybe that's not the right word. This one fouled away right side one and one. 
but a little bit different, different color to it. Mm -hmm. All right, a little variety, and we'll have that ready to go. I apologize, I don't know that a young man's name that came in on the Sod Squad. 1-1, one, one, low and away in the count now, 2-1. and one. But uh, I have secured the T. Singer out of the windup, 2-1. And it's upstairs, 3-1. and one. We mentioned that sort of not really herky-jerky, but not particularly fluid windup by Singer. He kind of jolts backwards with that front leg and very quickly goes into his windup. This one lined into right field. Coming on is Miller. He reels it in. And a 1-2-3 inning for Brady Singer. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. We go to the third, Amarillo trailing 2 nothing on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. Beautiful night here at Hodgetown as we go to the third, Amarillo trailing 2 nothing. Left-hander Nick Mark Avages back to work. He'll face Castellano, Burt, and Merrill, 9-1-2. Mark Avages giving up that two-run shot to Miller as the Naturals took a 2 nothing lead. First pitch bounced over to third. Easy play for Hudson Potts. He slings it across the diamond in time. One pitch and one out for Mark Avages here in the third. And now the leadoff man, D.J. Burt, coming up. Two runs, three hits, no errors for the Naturals. No runs, one hit, and no errors for Amarillo. If you're tuned in tonight on 940 AM, the voice of Amarillo online, or, of course, watching on MILB TV, let us know. Tweet at us at Sod Poodles. Tweet at me at Sammy Lev, S-A-M-M-Y-L-E-V. Email open, Sam L, S A M L, at sodpoodles.com. First pitch a curve in for a strike on one. Burt flew out to left field to begin the game. Now the 0 1, and it's low. One ball, one strike. 1 2 3 first inning for Mark Avages, and then three hits given up, including the home run to Miller in the second. Instagram, Facebook messages as well. We check it all. 1-1. One, one, and it rides away. 2-1. and one. Let us know who you are and where you're tuned in from tonight. And we might just give you a shout-out on the air. 2-1. And a looping curve outside. Three balls, one strike on Burt. Another great crowd here at Hodgetown. Third base side, first base side filled up nicely. Bar 352. The drink counter across that left field fence. Everybody lined up out there. 3-1. This one lifted high in the air. Shallow right field. Coming over is Olivares, and it'll reach about that third row of seating by the right field bullpen. And Burt stays alive. Sun setting beyond the third base side, about to tuck under that. First Bank Southwest building. 3-2 en route. Swinging a high fly ball. This one playable. Second baseman, Miller goes out. Right fielder Olivares comes in, and Olivares reels it in. There's out number two. So two away, nobody on. Amarillo trailing 2-0 top three. And it brings up Kevin Merrill. The brand new facility Hodge Town, a place where Amarillo has seen 18 straight sellouts, including last night. The pitch is in for a strike, 0 1. Big milestone last night, too. Saudis winning their 50th game of the year. And Hodge Town welcoming its 300,000 fan. Right. 0 1. Low, one ball, one strike. And you presented the little girl with some I did. prizes. Little eight year old named Jay Lee. We gave her a hat. We made her the fan of the game. Later in the ball game. 1 1. Swing line drive into right center. Olivares over with Reed. Nobody will get it. This will roll by the warning track. Cut off by Reed. Merrill around second. Here comes the relay. Long throw on the money. And not in time. Merrill gets in. That was a tremendous throw by Buddy. I said the relay because you assumed there would be a relay, but we know Buddy has a rocket arm. Didn't need it. And he almost got Merrill, who has a two-out triple. Did not get all the way into that triple triangle 
in right center with that deep pocket by the A and B sign. But Merrill, who can absolutely fly, just rumbling around the bases, and he has a two-out triple. Merrill was going to third all the way on that play. He never hesitated at second. So here is Cancel. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. 0-1. 2-0 Northwest Arkansas, top three, Merrill 90 feet away. And a very, very good hitter in Cancel. A one, fastball, makes the outside corner a called strike. 0-2, Cancel 16 home runs. He is now one of four players in the league with 16 home runs. One being Amarillo's own Edward Olivares. The other three are Cancel, Dylan Carlson of Springfield, and the hooks, Ronnie Dawson. Now the 0-2, and it's outside. 82 miles an hour. Went to the changeup that time. One and two. Mark Avages, 44 pitches in. He winds and he deals. Up and away. Fastball at 90 miles an hour. Two and two. Cancel out of Puerto Rico. 2-2, bouncer foul right at home plate. Seventh rounder in 2015. Amarillo has a Puerto Rican on their team, reliever J.C. Cosme. Two two, swing ground ball towards the middle, played by Miller behind the bag. He bobbles, throws the first in time, four three put out, and the side retired in the third. In the inning, no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on. Middle of three, Northwest Arkansas two, Amarillo nothing on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. Amarillo trailing 2 nothing as we go to the bottom half of the third. Buddy Reed, Rodrigo Orozco, and Yvonne Castillo do up. Right-hander Brady Singer, so far so good. Two scoreless innings and the pitch to Reed. Wave and a miss, strike one, a fastball at 93. Buddy at 234, 11 home runs and 41 RBIs, three for seven in this series. A couple of former teammates here. The 0-1 is inside. One and one. Reed, who went to the University of Florida, former Gator, and Singer, also a former Gator. Now, Buddy, a little bit older than Brady. One, one. Swing and a foul tip. And the count, one and two. Reed selected in the second round in 2016. Singer selected 18th overall in 2018. Uh, these two guys did cross over at the program in the SEC. 1-2, and fastball in, 2-2. Two two. Of course, Buddy was college roommates with Pete Alonzo, who might be the NL Rookie of the Year, and won the home run derby a few weeks ago. 2-2 two -two en route, swinging a pop-up foul, third base side. Do it again at 2-2. Two and two. In fact, Buddy told me that his parents, who are very friendly with Alonzo's family, they were there at the Home Run Derby in Cleveland. And I know Buddy was talking to Pete later that night. They are still very good friends. 2-2 en route, and a fastball in there, strike three at 94. Fifth strikeout through the first trip through the order tonight for Brady Singer, one away. And now the top of the order in Rodrigo Orozco. By the way, speaking of National League Rookie of the Year, 
Obviously, Pete Alonso having a tremendous year with the Mets. Pitch to Orozco, low ball one. And another guy you could throw into that conversation is Padres right-hander Chris Paddock. 1-0, low and in, 2-0. Another guy you could throw into that conversation would, of course, be Fernando Tatis Jr. So the Padres have a couple of really, really good rookies. 2-0 is low ball three. Mets have one. One thing at least I'm excited about, and I know others are excited about, is the young talent in the game. 3-0. In for a strike, 3-1. and one. A lot of young players up and coming. Kind of a new regime of young superstars like Paddock and Alonzo and Tatis and many more. 3-1. Swing line drive at the center and a base hit. Played on a hop by Lee. And that is the second hit against Singer tonight. Orozco with a one-out single. So here's Castillo. Struck out his first time, rotting that 18-game hit streak. Pitch on the way. Swing line, drive, foul, a rocket by Castillo. Well foul, but he absolutely zoomed it down that right field side. 0-1. Amarillo trailing 2-0, bottom three. Roscoe, good speed, held on by Castellano. Switch hitter from the left side. 0-1. Swing and a miss. Threw him an off-speed pitch there. Change up, and the count 0 2. Pitch and root is up and away, 1 and 2. Speaking of the Padres, they are off tonight. Begin a three-game series against the Mets at City Field tomorrow night. 1-2 on the way. Fouled away, left side. Do it again at 1-2. and two. Castillo, who was named the Texas League Player of the Week earlier today. Along with Lake Bocker, who is Pitcher of the Week. Throw to first base and back in safely is Roscoe. Two-nothing Amarillo trailing, bottom three. Singer looks in. Olivares on deck. One-two en route. Swinging a high fly ball, left field and shallow. Burt racing in, still coming, still coming, and it's the shortstop. Or actually, it's the third baseman, Rivera, who I would say had the worst angle on it, who makes the play down that left field line. Puts it away. That was a very good play by Rivera. If he doesn't get it, I don't know that anybody would have. So two men away here in the third. Roscoe on first base, and here is Olivares. That was a really good play by Rivera. It's rare that on that ball with the, where the left fielder shortstop and third baseman all come together where the third baseman is the guy who makes the play, but Rivera did a good job going out there to get it. Here's Olivares, the pitch. Belt high strike going one, a fastball at 92. Now the 0-1, he grounds one foul, trickles down the third baseline. 0-2, Olivares, who always wears that Venezuela arm sleeve on his left arm, and it sounded like he broke his bat, and he did. Now he goes back to the dugout to get a new piece of lumber. They're looking for the bat. 
Looks like Yvonne Castillo went to get it. Where's the bat boy? Come on. <laughs> Just joking. I, uh, I talked to those guys, the bat boys, who do a great job with uh, Sound Poodles Clubhouse manager Jacob Dwiggins. Talk to those guys every day. Make sure to give them a hard time. They do a good job and they stay busy too. Yes. Throw to first base. Ross go back in safely. 2 0 Northwest Arkansas on this beautiful Monday night. Stadium looking great. Throw to first again. Orozco back in again, diving. Maintained very, very well by the director of stadium operations, Wayne Lobline. It is, as per usual, sparkling for the finale of this seven-game homestand. Throw to first again, and again, Orozco back in. It is a not an easy job to keep this place looking this good over a seven-game stretch, but Wayne and his staff, along with Zach, a bunch of other folks as well, they uh, do a great job keeping it clean and ready to rock for the sellout crowds. It has looked terrific, Sam, all year. Remember, we were down in single digits in February, too, when some of that sod was down, so really looks nice. Now the 0-2, up and in. Fastball at 93, one and two. Olivares, like we said, came in batting 300, fourth in the league, tied for first in home runs with 16. He's first in RBIs with 65. One, two, he hammers one into center, coming on Lee, won't get it, a base hit. Orozco up to second, and Olivares a base hit. What do you know, he's two for two, what else is new? And now two on, two outs for Owen Miller. <laughs> Miller a strikeout. First time up, two on, two men away. 2-0 Amarillo trailing third inning. First pitch on the way, and it's low and outside, ball one. Slider that time at 83. Now the one piece of good news is that Amarillo has made Brady Singer work a bit. He's about to throw his 50th pitch tonight. Not yet done with the third. Looks in, has his sign. 1-0, taken away. 2-0. Two zero, foul the way right side. Two and one. Two and one, as Singer comes set, and the pitch, low and away, three and one. Torrens is on deck. The outfield straight up. Infield straight away as well. Good speed on the bases in Roscoe and Olivares. 3-1. Swing and a foul straight back. 3-2. So let's see what Singer comes with here on 3-2. Miller, one of the more consistent hitters in the Texas League, that 302, or I should say 298 average coming in. Fifth in the league. Singer peers in. Ball into his mitt. Looks to run her back. 3-2. Swinging a high pop-up behind second. 
Merrill looking for it, and he's got it, and he makes the catch, and that's the inning. So second inning already, where Amarillo has left two on. In the frame, no runs on, two hits, no errors, and two left on. End of three, Amarillo trailing 2 nothing on the Amarillo Sod Poodles radio network. We go to the fourth inning. Amarillo trailing 2 nothing. Left-hander Nick Mark is back to work. Go face Khalil Lee, Emmanuel Rivera, and Taylor Featherston. Sam Levitt with you on the Sod Poodles radio network on this beautiful Monday night. Mark is giving up the two-run homer to Anderson Miller. In the second, that's been it. Pitch on the way to Lee. And a curve in for a strike going one. Well, we continue our charity spotlight series presented by Caldwell Business Group in this fourth inning. Pitch is grounded foul, 0 and 2. And right now we're joined by Rafael Estrada, the relay for life of Panhandle Plains Chair from the American Cancer Society. Find out about relay for life. And what's going on there? Now the 0-2. Swing and a miss by Lee in the dirt. Torrens picks it up, runs him down about halfway down the line, then throws the first base and the second strikeout tonight for Mark Avichis. One down in the fourth inning. Rafael, good to have you here. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. So tell us about a Relay for Life and uh, what it's all about, when it is, and what we need to know. Well, a Relay for Life is it's a fundraiser for the American Cancer Society. This is a worldwide uh, organization that helps out, that helps save lives, uh, pretty much. Uh, what it does, it also uh, it does research for cancer to try to find a cure. Once again, Rafael Estrada joining us from Relay for Life, part of the uh, American Cancer Society. So when is the event coming up in 2020? It's going to be April 18th at the Rex Baxter Building. And it will be a full day event starting about noon to about 6, 7 o'clock in the afternoon. All right, very nice. By the way, Emmanuel Rivera, single up the middle. One out, brings up Taylor Featherston as Mark Avages looks in. Middle infielders Miller and Van Gansen play back. And the pitch is up and away ball one. So you said April 18th. 18th. Yes, sir. Okay, very nice. Now, uh, certainly the American Cancer Society, very passionate about finding a cure for cancer. Nearly 2 million volunteers nationwide. 1-0 outside, 2-0. And so for those who want to get involved, who want to participate, in Relay for Life, how do they do that? We also have an office here in Amarillo, the right. American Cancer Society, it's over on Bill. Uh, you can go by there and they can get all the information. Okay. You can reach us on the Facebook page, which is Am Relay for Life of Amarillo also. And someone from our uh, event leadership team will contact you and re reply to any message you have on there also. All right, very nice. Mark Aff just comes set, 2-1, foul the way. And the count now, 2-2. Two and two. Again, that Relay for Life of Panhandle Plains on April 18th. What's the website? Uh, you can go to Facebook. Uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Relay for Life of Amarillo on Facebook. Okay. The ACS, which is American Cancer Society, you can go online too. 2-2, two, two, a foul tip. Do it again at 2-2. Two and two. Once again, Rafael Estrada, the Relay for Life of Panhandle Plains chair, joining us, part of our Charity Spotlight Series, presented by Caldwell Business Group. Events at the local, national, and global level. Throw to first base, and in safely is Rivera. And right now we're talking about the very local level with that Relay for Life event on April 18th, 2020. So plenty of time to register and get involved. Two and two, and the pitch. Swinging a foul again. Good at bat here by Featherston. Amarillo trailing 2 0, one out. Rivera on first base here in the fourth. Check out their Facebook page. Get more info on everything that uh, this chapter of the American Cancer Society is doing. 2 2 in the dirt, 3 and 2. Oh, Rafael, what else is going on uh, with the. Uh, with the uh, society and with Relay for Life that we should know about. It's just a, it's a 
year-round activity. Yep. We have different kinds of activities. Uh, Market Street United is actually one of our big sponsors. Uh, they will ha be having an event here pretty soon in the parking lot to sell burgers and things like that to uh, help raise money, funds for the American Cancer Society also. So a little bit of everything. Uh, our big day will be April 18th, like I said, uh, which will be our event at the Rex Baxter Building. 3-2 on the way. Swinging a drive into left center. Orozco going back. He won't get it. One hops the fence. Picked up by Orozco. Here comes Rivera around third being waved around. Here comes the relay throw up the line toward a third base. They got him there. So Rivera does come in. That will be an RBI double for Featherston. The put out will go 7-2-5. to two to five. It's now a 3-0 Northwest Arkansas lead. And Anderson Miller, who had that two-run home run in the second, coming up. So good play by Torrens to get the out at third base. That makes it two men away. And here is Miller. Well, might limit the damage against Margavichus. The pitch. In for a strike, 0-1. Mark Avages working quickly. 0-1. Grounded over to second. Picked up by Miller. He's got it. Throws the first in time. And that's the inning. So in the inning for Northwest Arkansas, they get one run on one hit. No errors. Nobody left on. Middle of four. Amarillo trailing 3-0. Rafael, we appreciate you coming on. Again, Relay for Life coming up on April 18, yes, 2020. Uh, best of luck. We'll Thank talk you. to you next time, and uh, thanks for coming on. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate All right. it. Absolutely. Middle of the fourth inning, Amarillo nothing, and Northwest Arkansas three on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. Tennis ball trying to knock off the Cliffside Coffee Cups. Here you go. Are you ready? Set. Make everybody laugh. Spin it, buddy. So, whoa, that was really fast. Whoa, that was a total miss. Come on, hook them bears, or whatever you say at Baylor. Come on, here we go. Oh, you missed, you missed again. You are really terrible at this game right now. Ty, swing, spin, boy, spin. There you go, keep spinning. Just keep spinning, just keep, no, you gotta start spinning again. Keep spinning, keep spinning, keep spinning. Spin. No, that didn't count, that didn't count. Ty, here you go. You got five seconds, you got five seconds to get that one down. Five, four, yeah! Ty, high five, buddy, way to go, man. All right, Wade, we got another winner, Cliffside around the horn. Back to you. Thank you, Dennis. Cliffside Coffee takes your coffee to the edge. Make sure you visit our two locations on the corner of 27th and Osage and 45th and Tecla. For your coffee fix in the ballpark, make sure you visit the Feed and Seed concession stand. We head to the bottom of the fourth inning on this beautiful Monday night here at Hodgetown. Amarillo trailing 3 0. Torrens, Potts, and Van Gansen, two up against the right hander, Brady Singer. Torrens, a strikeout, his first time. Infield, outfield, straight up, and the pitch. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Got some uh, shout outs to get to. We've got Krisha Perkins chiming in on Twitter, watching and listening from their living room in Southwest Amarillo. Join the broadcast tonight. This one grounded over to short slowly. Merrill's got it, gloves and throws on the run in time. 6-3 put out. One away in the fourth inning. We also have Saudi's fan 105 chiming in watching on MILB TV. We appreciate it. We've got Alex and Austin listening tonight as well. Chiming in on Instagram. We've got Andrew Boswell chiming in, sitting down below or right below us, listening to the game tonight. The pitch to Hudson Potts is rolled over to shortstop. Merrill's got it again, throws to first again. And again, there's out number two. So two outs, nobody on quickly, and it brings up Peter Van Gansen. Amarillo South Puddles Baseball on the radio is brought to you by W Marketing. Visit them online at WMarketing.com. That's double the letter U, marketing.com. 
Two outs, space is empty for Van Gansen. Amarillo trailing three, nothing bottom four. The pitch is up and away ball one. Take a look at our down on the farm report in this fourth inning. 1-0, swing and a miss, one and one. Down on the farm report brought to you by Yellow House Machinery, your local John Deere construction equipment dealer for over 60 years. And the pitch by Singer. Grounded back to Singer. He's got it. Throws to first in plenty of time. One, two, three inning for Singer. And we'll get to that down on the farm report in the next inning. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. We head to the fifth inning. Amarillo nothing. And Northwest Arkansas three on the Amarillo Soft Poodles radio network. Beautiful night here in downtown Amarillo as we go to the fifth inning. Amarillo trailing 3 0. Left hander Nick Markavich is back to work. He'll face Hutchins, Castellano, and Burt, 8 9 and 1 in the Naturals lineup. Pitch on the way to Hutchins, a swing and a miss. Pulled the string. Curveball that time, 0 and 1. Sam, you mentioned a beautiful evening. How about 81 degrees right now with the wind blowing in? 0-1, grounded left side, backhanded by Van Gansen. He's got it, throws the first in time. 6-3 put out. One down in the fifth inning. Let's get to our down on the farm report again, presented by Yellow House Machinery. Fort Wayne leading Cedar Rapids 8-2. Sixth inning in the Midwest League. Lake Elsinore hosting Visalia tonight. Bottom half of the first inning there. The pitch foul the way. Straight back 0-1. Tri-City at Vancouver. That one coming up tonight at 9.05. And that is a look at what's going on in the San Diego system tonight. Our Down on the Farm report presented by Yellow House Machinery. 0-1 is upstairs in the count now 1-1. One one. What is going on down there? There are just a couple of kids throwing T-shirts everywhere. <laughs> Heard some yelling. 1-1. One, one. Fouled the way straight back in the count now 1-2. and two. By the way, we'd like to give a special shout-out tonight to Judy Johnson watching on MILB TV tonight in Kansas City. She is Grant Gavin's grandma. A reliever for the Naturals. 1-2. Swing and a liner. Foul. Rolls by the bullpen. Do it again at 1-2. and two. So, Judy, we appreciate you tuning in. And uh, glad to have you with us on this Monday night. Hope uh, you're enjoying the ball game tonight. One and two, and the pitch in the dirt. Two and two. Mark Avich is giving up two in the second and one in the fourth inning. Amarillo still trailing three nothing. The pitch is popped up. First base side, Overstreet comes in. Foul ground now and he pulls it in. And there is the second out of this fifth inning. Nobody on. And it brings up D.J. Bird. I hear more yelling, and now they're throwing away other T-shirts tonight. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This one lined into left field. The Roscoe comes on, can't get it. And he'll play it back in. A two-out single for D.J. Pert. His first hit tonight. Three-nothing Amarillo trailing. And here is Kevin Merrill, who had a triple. In the third, Mark Avages looks in, trying to keep it a three-run game. Lights on now. Here in downtown Amarillo, he comes set, and the pitch. 
Fastball in for a strike, 0 1. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for the Naturals. No runs, three hits, and no errors for the Saudis. On a beautiful Monday night for this series finale and this seven game homestand finale. Throw to first base and back in safely is DJ Burt. Like we said, and like we've talked about a ton during this series, Northwest Arkansas, they love to run. Mark Avich just looks in, has his sign. And the 0-1, or no, throw to first base, and Burt back in safely. Now the 0-1 in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Fifth inning, Amarillo trailing three zip. Day off tomorrow. We'll get on the bus tomorrow morning and bus to Springfield, Missouri. Start of a seven-game trip coming up on Wednesday. Three in Springfield and then four against these Naturals in Springdale. Springfield and Springdale. Missouri and Arkansas. 1-1, popped up, third base side out of play, 1-2. and two. Sam, how many hours to spring Springfield? Uh, it's, it's not the longest trip of the year. I think it's about, I'm trying to remember the first time we went. I want to say it's about nine-ish hours. Shame was flashing uh, about eight hours or yeah, so, eight, eight to nine well, hours. Yeah, with stops, it's not nine as, to ten. Not yeah. as far as Corpus Christi. No, then. that is the longest trip in the, by the way, in our division. <laughs> that is the uh, longest trip we have. And that, with stopping and with drivers switching, that takes about 11 to 12. This one will take about nine to ten. Throw to first and Burt back in safely. So it's good you have a day off. Well, it's <laughs> if you consider that a day off. One way to spend the day off. Mark Avich has come set. One, two on the way. And a fastball in there, strike three. Got him looking. Third strikeout for Nick Mark Avich tonight. And a scoreless fifth inning, no runs on one hit. And one left on, middle of the fifth inning. Northwest Arkansas three, and the Sod Poodles nothing on the Amarillo Sod Poodles radio network. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Amarillo trailing three nothing. First pitch from Brady Singer to Kyle Overstreet. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Overstreet, Reed, and Roscoe, 8 9 and 1. Two up for Amarillo. 0 1. And it's outside. One ball, one strike. So far, so good for Singer, who's putting together his best outing against the Saudis in three outings. 1 1. Swing ground ball towards the middle. Backhanded by Featherston. Throws off balance first in time. 4 3 put out. And there's one down in the fifth. And Singer is now retired. Five in a row. Amarillo had two good early opportunities. They had two on in the first inning and the third. Couldn't score in either frame. Now one out, nobody on here in the fifth inning. And here is Buddy Reed. Struck out looking in the third. The pitch taken low ball one. Sam, the Saudis have scattered three hits so far, but only one man in scoring position, and that was Orozco back in the third. Pitch to Reed is outside, one and one. Third baseman Rivera plays in, 2-0, in for a strike, 2-1. Let's take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard tonight brought to you by Coors Light. Coors Light is a lighter, crisper taste, so you're ready for what's next. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. 2-1, a wave and a miss. 2-2. Two and two. Texas League scoreboard tonight. Springfield leading 
Corpus Christi 3 to 2. Eighth inning at Whataburger Field. The pitch. Low 3 and 2. Midland beating Tulsa 7 to 3. Fifth inning at One Oak Field. And Frisco beating Arkansas 3 0 in the sixth inning in North Little Rock. Meanwhile, big league side, Padres off today. 3 2 on the way. Swing and a miss. Got him. Six strikeout for Brady Singer. Two down. And here is Rodrigo Orozco. Other scores around the big leagues tonight. Astros beating up on the A's 11-0. As the Astros absolutely demolished Homer Bailey tonight. They have 11 runs on 11 hits in three innings. First pitch low ball one. So Houston leading Oakland 11-0 in the fourth inning now. 1-0. Inside, 2-0. Rangers in Seattle taking on the Mariners tonight. 9-10 Central Time. 2-0 is in for a strike in the count. Now 2-1. And, and like we said, the Padres are off. They'll start a series against the Mets in New York tomorrow. 2-1. Low, 3-1. Fastball at 93. Singer's been very, very good tonight. This so far, his best outing against the Saudis. And his longest as well. 3-1. Outside ball four. He walked him. So that's the way the Saad Poodles get a base runner on. A walk to Roscoe has been on all three times tonight. Now two walks and a single. Two out base runner brings up Ivan Castillo. Singer comes set. Castillo 0 for 2. And the pitch. Swinging a liner into left field. Burt coming on. He's there. Makes the catch. Bullet the other way by Castillo. But he's now 0 for 3 in the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. End of five. Naturals three, Sod Poodles nothing on the Amarillo Sod Poodles radio network. Another great crowd here at Hodgetown as we go to the sixth inning. Amarillo trailing 3 0. Left hander Nick Margavich is back to work. First pitch to Gabriel Cancel. Golfed in the air into center. Playable. Reed comes in and he puts it away. One pitch and one out for Nick Margavich in the sixth. And it brings up the cleanup man Khalil Lee. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for the Naturals. No runs, three hits, and no errors for Amarillo. Now Margavichus has been pretty good tonight aside from the two run homer to Miller in the second. And he gave up another run. In the fourth this one hit high in the air left field going back to Roscoe by the line in the corner and he's there to make the play. Right up against that sidewall about four or five feet in front of that left field fence. And there is out number two. So I believe that was in the first pitch to lead. That's now two pitches and two outs in this inning for Nick Margavichus, who has thrown 76. Not much foul territory down there in the left field line there. Orozco had nowhere to go. He went as far as he could to make that catch right by the wall. Now let's see if the Naturals take a pitch here. Give Brady Singer a moment to breathe. Out of the windup and the pitch. In for a strike going one. Rivera tonight, two for two, a run scored. Came in on the Featherston double in the fourth. Oh one, one ripped a base hit down the left field side. Bangs off the sidewall right to Orozco. Around first, Rivera. Here comes the throw. The play at second. Rivera gets in. His third hit tonight. A double. 
And a two out runner on second for Northwest Arkansas. So here's Featherston who had that RBI double. Three home runs on Saturday. Pitched by Margavichis is low ball one. Well, Margavichis trying to make it what would be a quality outing if he can make it six innings and three runs given up. But right now on the short end, as Brady Singer has been very, very good for the Naturals, 1 0. And it's in for a strike, 1 and 1. Come set. 1-1. One, one. And it's outside. 2-1. and one. Margavichis, who went to Ryder University. Of course, a very, very interesting story. Began the year in the Padres rotation. Was a relative unknown coming into spring training. 2-1 in the dirt. And Torrens looking for it. Can't find it. And good heads up base running by Rivera goes up the third a wild pitch on Margavichis. Three and one. The pitch. Right down Polk Avenue. And count three and two. I should say Polk Street. <laughs> Sam, I'm impressed. You're learning these streets. What, should I say, uh, what's the other one? Not, uh, not Polk. What's the other one off the highway? Buchanan? No, the, uh, three, two on the way. How the way. Two to get a three and two. Uh, Fillmore. Fillmore. Is that it? Fillmore. Taylor. Pierce. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> one of them. <laughs> right down uh, I-40. Well, they're all oh, that one. They're all presidents. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right down Bell, Coulter, Sansi. Now you're talking. Three and two on Featherston. Margavich has come set. The pitch. Swing and he hits one high but shallow. Reed coming in on the run, and he puts it away. Fly at the center, and that is the inning. So a good outing tonight for Mark Avages. We'll see how much longer he goes. No runs on one hit. No errors, and one left on. Middle of the sixth inning, Naturals three, Sod Poodles nothing on the Amarillo Sod Poodles radio network. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning here at Hodgetown. Amarillo trailing 3-0. They've got the middle of the order due up against Brady Singer. Olivares, Miller, and Torrens, 3-4-5. and five. Singer putting together so far his best outing against Amarillo this year. Five scoreless innings. He struck out six, allowed just three hits. Roddy on Roddy, the pitch. Low and away ball one. Fastball at 93. Olivares, though, two for two, couple of singles. 1-0. Nails the outside corner, a strike, and the count 1-1. One and one. Olivares now 6 for 10 in this series with three home runs. He continues to be unreal. 1-1 one, one, low and away, and the count now 2-1. and one. He came into tonight batting 300. 16 home runs tied for first in the league. 65 RBIs, that is first in the league. 71 runs scored, also leads the league. 2-1 foul straight back, 2-2. Two and, two. and as we discussed yesterday, Paul, I think here on July 22nd, and obviously still a long way to go in this 2019 campaign, but you could make the case that Edward Olivares is right in the middle of that Texas League MVP conversation. 2-2 two, two in there, strike three. Got him looking. Strikeout number seven tonight for Brady Singer, who continues to roll. One down, 
And it brings up the cleanup man, Owen Miller. Miller 0 for 2, infield, outfield, straight up. And the pitch. Low and away ball one. A couple of 2018 draft picks going at it. Miller, a third rounder out of Illinois State. And Singer, 18th overall out of Florida. This one lined over to second on a couple of hops. Bobbled by Featherston. Picks it up, throws to first, and not in time. Miller beats it out. The throw a little bit offline as well. And they do give Featherston an error. It was hit sharply by Miller, but certainly a play that Featherston should have made. He had it right in his mitt, right at him, too. And they do give an error to Taylor Featherston at second. Right, bobbled the ball and then threw it wide at first. So Amarillo, a one out base runner, they trail 3 0, sixth inning. And here is Luis Torrens. Been a quiet night for the Amarillo offense. And the pitch. Up and in ball one. An offense that has had a very, very good month of July. Came in batting 278 in the month. That's tied for first to double A. Second in runs scored at double A. And third in double A at home runs. So they've had a very good offensive month. 1-0. Low and away 2-0. They scored seven runs last night. Scored 12 on Friday night in the two wins of this series. Sam, as you mentioned earlier, Brady Singer just keeps racking up strikeouts. Seven now. 2-0 and a fastball on the outside corner called strike at 93, 2-1. Singer now at 87 pitches. There is action in the Northwest Arkansas bullpen. Left-hander Emilio Ogando getting loose. 2-1. Swing and a line drive. Hit well into right field. It might go, and it's gone. An absolute bullet by Luis Torrens. Just over that short porch in right field. A happy State Bank home run. It didn't make it by much, but it made it. And Amarillo now down by one. It's three to two here in the sixth inning. That was a rocket. Just over that short porch in right field, landing on the Yellow House berm. I called it a line drive, and that's exactly what it was. Home run number nine for Luis, and Amarillo right back in this thing. Now trailing three to two. First pitch a strike to Hudson Potts. Pitch on the way in the dirt, one and one. Torrance ball got out of here quickly. It did. That was a bullet. 0-1, and Potts takes it outside, 2-1. Two 2-1, one. this one hit high in the air, shallow though. Miller comes in, camps under it, and he reels it in for out number two. So two away. And here is Peter Van Gansen. PBG over two tonight. In the sinning, the error by Featherston, home run by Torrens, first pitch low ball one. No, oh, I said a brand new ball game. Not that Amarillo was really out of the game down by three, but with the way Singer was going, that home run by Torrens feels big. Out of the windup, 
1 0, low, 2 0. Change up that time. Agondo looks ready in the Northwest Arkansas bullpen. Singer now at 94 pitches. The offering, swinging a high fly ball, shallow left. Burt comes in. He's there, and he makes the play for out number three. But Amarillo does get two runs on one hit, one error, nobody left on. End of six. It's Northwest Arkansas three and Amarillo two on the Amarillo Soft Poodles Radio Network. off for the natural right. Now the sweet sounds of Beyonce blaring here at Hodgetown as we go to the seventh inning. Northwest Arkansas three and Amarillo two. Left-hander Nick Margavich is back to work. He'll face Miller, Hutchins, and Castellano. Seven, eight, nine in the Northwest Arkansas lineup. First pitch is low ball one. Fastball at 87. Three runs, eight hits, one error for the Naturals. Sot Poodles have two runs, four hits, and no errors tonight. 1 0, swinging a foul. 1 and 1. Mark Avichis has been pretty good tonight. Six innings and three runs given up. But right now, but right now on the short end, Luis Torrens, a two run homer in the bottom half of the sixth inning to make it a 3 to 2 game. 1 1, a cut and a miss. 1 and 2. Paul, are you a big Beyonce fan? I think so. All right, there you, you go. You mean there are people who are not? <laughs> Is that what you're well, the, assuming? The uh, Beyonce fans, they're called the Beehive. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm a, a card-carrying member of uh, said hive, <laughs> but I do enjoy some Beyonce. 1 2 on the way. Missed outside, not by much. And the count now 2 and 2. Right hander Carlos Berlin is warming up in the Amarillo bullpen. The pitch is low, ball three. Miller had that two run home run in the second. His fourth home run. 3 2. Up and away, ball four. So he was ahead of Miller and he walked him. That is the first walk given up tonight by Mark Avichis. So leadoff man on and brings up Nick Hutchins. Mark Avichis now at 91 pitches. So we'll see how far he's going to go with Belin warming up. Hutchins over two. Second baseman and shortstop Miller and Van Gansen play up the middle. The pitch. Swing ground ball, and it's fair down the third baseline. Bangs off the sidewall. Orozco picks it up. Throw will go to third base. Won't be in time. And Miller on third. Hutchins on second. And now Northwest Arkansas has two in scoring position and nobody out after the double by Hutchins. Margavichus looks in. Oh, big spot here. Two on. Nobody out. Amarillo trailing three to two, and they're trying to keep it a one-run game. The pitch. Up high ball one. So we'll see. Top of the order, DJ Burt on deck, and we'll see what the leash is here for Nick Margavichus. Potts in at third. Overstreet playing in at first base. Middle infielders play back. 1-0. Popped up. Right side of the infield, Miller in shallow right looking for it, and he gets it. Boy, it looked for a moment like he could not locate it in that twilight sky, and he finally found it, made the catch a step or two 
into foul territory and a big out number one. Miller went a long way to make that play, too. He was playing fairly deep at second and had to come all the way to the bullpen, the first base side, to make the catch. And he struggled to bring it down, but he did. So here's D.J. Burt. One for three. The pitch. Swing and a foul tip. 0-1. Oh Got Kevin Merrill on deck. Boleyn warming up. One one swing ground ball over to second. This will get a run in and Miller throws the first in time Four three put out but an RBI for DJ Burt. As Miller crosses home and the Naturals have taken a four to two lead. So Amarillo exchanging an out for a run. Naturals get one right back. RBI for Burt is his ninth to double A. Meanwhile, Hutchins went to third base and now Kevin Merrill. Still Mark Avages, 96 pitches in the pitch. And a breaking ball in for a strike on one. Well, if you're Nick now, you're just trying to keep this a one-run game, keep it a two-run game. It's not like the Naturals bullpen has been excellent this year, and they've certainly not been in this series. 1-0, fastball. In for a strike, scrapes that bottom part of the zone. 0 oh 2. So I think the thinking there was don't play the infield in, exchange the out for the run, and to take your chances to get two or more against this Northwest Arkansas pen. 0 oh 2, check swing at a roller foul between home and the dugout. That boy goes out to get it. Count stays 0 oh 2 on Merrill. Miller was playing deep, and when the ball was hit to the right side, runner broke immediately from home plate. There just was no play there. Now the 0-2. Foul straight back over the main rotunda. Do it again at 0-2. Lights are on now here at Hodgetown. The sun is set. It is a beautiful and very, very comfortable night for late July, just 83 degrees at first pitch tonight. A little bit cooler now, very, very nice night. The 0-2, swing and a miss. Strikeout number four for Mark Avages. That'll probably do it for him tonight. He's 101 pitches in. And a very nice outing for Mark Avages in the seventh inning. One run on one hit, no errors, and one left on. Middle of seven. It's Amarillo trailing 4-2 to two on the Amarillo Sock Poodles Radio Network. Hanging out as a big one tribe, side poodle tribe. Hanging out today, we're gonna sing the seventh inning stretch. So if you guys will start the music, we'll get everybody up on their feet and get ready to sing. I hear the music, that means we gotta start swaying. This way, this way, that way. This way, here we go, everybody all together. Take me out to the ball. Oh, everybody sounds good tonight. I can hear the audience for the first time. Root for the Saudis. Alright, yell it out, everybody. For it's one strikes, you're out at the old ball. When the seventh comes, stand up and stretch. Eat a big old pretzel without regrets. Them pups will win just like we knew they would. They are the side poodles, side poodles. That's right, they're called the side poodles. You better be careful when you're driving into the wind. Our ace will go for 15 Ks. A couple homers from our big DH. Them side pups, man, they sure know how to win. They are the side poodles, side poodles. That's right, they're called the side poodles. Them side pups, man, they sure know how to win. They are the side poodles, side poodles. That's right, they're called the side poodles. Them side pups, man, they sure know how to win. They are the side poodles, side poodles. That's right, they're called the 
the side fiddles and side pipes, man, they sure know how to win. They have the side fiddles, side fiddles, that's right, they're called the side fiddles and side pipes, man, they sure know how to win. They have the side fiddles, side fiddles, that's right, they're called the side fiddles and side pipes, man, they sure know how. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Amarillo trailing 4-2. New pitch on the mound for Northwest Arkansas. Left-hander Emilio Ogando. After Brady Singer went two innings, or I should say went six innings tonight. Two runs and one earned given up. He's in line to win it. And now Ogando will face Overstreet, Reed, and Orozco 8-9-1. Left-hander Ogando and the pitch. Swing and a foul. 0-1. Our seventh inning stretch is always brought to you by Northwest Texas Healthcare System, proud partner of the Amarillo Sod Poodles, a founding partner. Gondo looks in. Now the 0-1, and it's taken belt high strike. 0-2. Franco Torero is. Uh, Getting loose in the Naturals bullpen. He pitched last night. Agondo looks in, has a sign, and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him on three pitches. Went to the curve that time. Strikes out over Street. So seven Ks for Singer. And now one to begin the seventh for Agondo. Series finale on this beautiful Monday night. We have not received the official attendance yet tonight, but Amarillo looking for their 19th consecutive sellout here at Hodgetown. We're going to see if they can get it. Pitch on the way to Reed is a little bit low and in ball one. Fastball at 92. Well, I don't know if they'll get it tonight or not. I do know. It's another great crowd, no doubt about that. Probably above 6,000. Will it be enough for the sellout? We'll see. 1-0. Bunning, third base side, good one. Ogando's got it, spins and throws, and he got him. That was a bullet by Gondo, and it got Reed by a step. He made a really nice play. So two outs, nobody on. And here is Orozco, who's been on all three times tonight. A couple of walks and a single. Four to two, Northwest Arkansas. Bottom seven, two outs, nobody on. And the pitch. Low ball one. South Poodles Baseball on the radio brought to you by IV Rejuvenation Station. Visit them online at IVRSTX.com. That's IVRSTX.com. Ogando comes set. 1-0. Up and away. And the count now 2-0. Emilio Ogando comes in 1-1. 1 1. 4-8 ERA, his 27th appearance. 50-plus innings, league batting, 225. 2-0 is low and in. 3-0. Ogando in his first year as a reliever. He was a starter for Northwest Arkansas last couple of years. 3-0 and for a strike in the count, 3-1. and one. Three, one is outside, ball four, and Orozco has walked for the third time tonight. So there have been three walks tonight by Naturals pitching, and all three have gone to Orozco. So two out base runner, and here is Ivan Castillo. And if you are Emilio Gondo, this is a part of the Amarillo lineup that you really got to be careful with. Castillo followed by Olivares, and Castillo now the tying run with Amarillo down 4-2. to two. 
Switch hitter now from the right side. And the pitch. Up and away, ball one. Torreira warming up in the bullpen. He's a right-hander, and we'll see if it gets to Edward Olivares in this inning. Does Daryl Kennedy go to Torreira to go righty on righty? Sotpudel should be so lucky to find out. 1-0. Swing and a foul. Off the mitt of Hutchins. One ball, one strike. Castillo riding an 18-game hit streak, and depending on what happens here in these final couple of innings, this might be his final shot to extend the streak. We'll see. Roscoe a short lead, held on by Castellano. 1-1, swing and a miss, blew it by him. Down in the zone, 1-2. Castillo of his seven home runs this year, two have been from the right side. One, two, swing ground ball foul. Goes by that Amarillo bullpen. Do it again at one and two. Carlos Bellin has been warming up for a while. Looks like he'll come in the eighth inning. Mark at 101 on the pitch count, so you would assume he's done. And it looks like, regardless of what happens here, Boleyn will be on for the eighth inning. With Amarillo right now trailing 4-2. to two. Long look in for Gondo. Castillo rests the bat on his shoulder. Staring into his eyes. Now he's ready. And the 1-2. Swing and a miss. Got him on a changeup, and that is the inning. Two strikeouts in the frame for Agondo. No runs on, no hits, one left on. End of seven. Northwest Arkansas four and Amarillo two on the Amarillo Sound Poodles Radio Network. Leading off for Northwest Arkansas, the designated hitter number 18, Gabrielle Cancel. In Springfield. And he went two innings, one run given up. So here is Berlin. The pitch. Low and away ball one. Berlin, who was promoted to double A from low A Fort Wayne earlier this week. 23 years old, out of Santo Domingo in the DR. Pitch to Gabriel Cancel. Fouled away. One and one. He's 6 1. 250 at Fort Wayne, 34 appearances, a 3.80 ERA, 42 plus innings, league hit 240, struck at 45, walked 11. So pretty good numbers at Fort Wayne with the 10 caps. 1 1, and it's low and in, 2 and 1. Berlin, who was originally an infielder in the San Diego system. And then uh, was uh, made into a pitcher. 2-1. Ground ball over to second. Played by Miller. Shuffling. And he throws the first in plenty of time. 4-3 put out. One down in the eighth inning. With Khalil Lee coming up. And then in 2018, he began pitching. And uh, now has turned himself into a pretty darn good minor league reliever. And we'll see where he can go from here. He was at one time rated by Baseball America as having the best infield arm in the Padre system. And they looked at that and said, well, you know what? Pitch to Lee fouled the way left side 0 and 1. They said, well, how about we turn you into a pitcher? And that's exactly what they did. And now Belin up here at double A. Was he a third baseman? He was. O one is low and in. One ball and one strike. Four runs, nine hits, one error for Northwest Arkansas. 
Two runs, four hits, no errors for Amarillo. And yes, the young man down there, the mic is on. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. And the count now, one and two. One and two the count. And the pitch by Belin is fouled away, first base side. Do it again at one and two. By the way, we do have our official attendance tonight. And that attendance is 6,558. 6558. And that means it is the 19th consecutive sellout here at Hodgetown. The pitch. Lifted high in the air, third base side. Potts over by the bullpen, gives it a look. You won't get it. Lands on top of the tarp. And we'll do it again at one and two on Lee. So the 19th consecutive sellout with more than 300,000 fans through the gates here in downtown Amarillo. So the streak uh, will continue into August officially. One, two en route, swing it a foul, first base side. And we'll do it again at one and two. There have been a couple of minor league teams that have had very, very long sellout streaks that have been around a long time. So a long streak, it can be done. And we will see how long it will go. But nothing is to say that it will stop at any time this year. We'll see. One, two en route. Swing ground ball, first base side, foul. Do it again at one and two. Four to two, Northwest Arkansas, eighth inning. One out, nobody on. Franco Torero is still getting loose in that Naturals bullpen, so presumably he'll come on for the bottom half of the eighth inning. The pitch. Fastball in there, strike three at 99 miles an hour. A beauty by Berlin. First strikeout for Berlin. Fifth tonight for Amarillo pitching. Margavich is at four. Two outs, nobody on, and here is Emmanuel Rivera. By the way, in that bottom half of the eighth inning, Amarillo will have Olivares, Miller, and Torrens due up. Berlin crouches low, looks in, back shoulder set, and the pitch. Brown ball over to short, played by Van Gansen to his side, flips it over to first in time, and a very nice one, two, three inning for Carlos Berlin. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. Middle of the eighth inning, Northwest Arkansas four and Amarillo two on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. Hey, I'm out here in right field with my friend Knox. Knox here is a motocross champion, but he's going to give it a spin trying to hit bombs for burgers. If he can get two over the fence, he's going to win some free burgers. All right, Knox, take that first cut, buddy. Go ahead. Hit it out there. Oh, that was close. That was close. All right, try it again. Try it again. Oh, okay, swing up. Swing up at the ball. Swing up at it. Here we go. That was better. Yes, we call that one good. They reached over. That was the interference, player interference. All right, go ahead. You need one more, buddy. You can do it. One more. Ooh, that was close. All right, come on. You got two more. You can do it, Knox. I feel it. I feel it. All right, Knox, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move you back this way. One step. Right there. Now, put it out. Right there. And, oh, we have time for one more because I'm a great host. Here we go. Right there. And it was a good practice. It was a good practice. Everybody saw it. Oh, you know what? You hit one over and you hit the ball hard. We're going to make you a winner for Hummer's Bomb for Burgers. Wave at the camera right there. Yes. Wade, we're going to throw it back to you, buddy. Thank you, Dennis. Remember, fans, you can redeem those coupons at Hummer's Sports Cafe, Amarillo's favorite sports, sports bar since 1983. Meet me at Hummer's. Right-hander Franco Torero comes on for the Naturals here in the eighth inning. Amarillo trailing 4-2. Alongside Paul Matney, Sam Levitt with you from our broadcast booth here on the Fairley Group Club level. On this beautiful night at Hodgetown, the 19th consecutive sellout with a crowd of more than 6,500 here. Middle of the order due up for Amarillo, Olivares, Miller, and Torrens. And Torero, who pitched last night through a scoreless inning, 
Now on for the eighth. In this series finale, Amarillo trying to take three of four. Pitch to Olivares. Swing ground ball over to third. Played by Rivera. He's got it. Slings it across the diamond in time. One pitch and one out for Torero here in the eighth. Amarillo's got two runs, four hits, no errors. The Naturals have four runs, nine hits, and one error. So Emilio Gondo went one scoreless inning out of the pen. And now the third pitcher used tonight by Daryl Kennedy is Franco Torero. The pitch in for a strike on one. A fastball at 96. Torero comes in. Two and four, 5-1 ADRA, his 32nd appearance, 33 innings, 36 Ks, 15 walks, the league batting 294. 0-1, swing and a miss, way out in front. Slider that time by Torero, and he's ahead of Miller 0-2. Now the 0-2 in the dirt. One and two. Left-hander holding caps, getting loose in the Naturals pen. Miller tonight 0 for 2, reached on an error and scored on the Torrens home run. Two-run shot in the sixth inning. That's been it. All the offense tonight for Amarillo. One, two, inside. And the count now two and two. We've got some other shout outs to get to, Paul. We've got Caitlin Clare on Twitter chiming in. They're watching from home tonight on MILB TV. 2 2 on the way. Swinging its nubbed foul down the first base side. Do it again at 2 and 2. We've got Gary Pittner listening from Granbury, Texas. Gary says he's enjoying the broadcast with a little strawberry ice cream on the patio. <laughs> Gary, hello, Gary and Linda. How about that? A little, <laughs> little ice cream. Save me some. 2-2, two -two, grounded, pass Torero up the middle, played by Merrill, throw to first, and he got him. Nicely done by Merrill. 6-3 put out. He's a very sure-handed shortstop. Two men away in the eighth inning. Nobody on. And Luis Torrens coming up. Sam, a real, real friendly hello to Linda and Gary Pittner. Gary did a lot of work, a lot of spade work, a lot of heavy lifting to help get this ball club here and also get uh, get this stadium built here. So thank you. Well, very well done. I think the uh, hard work paid off. 19 straight sellouts. What more do you need to know? Torrens digs in the pitch. Catches the outside corner strike one. Torrance at his ninth home run. RBIs 42 and 43. That two run shot in the sixth inning. That has been the only offense tonight for the Saudis who trail four to two eighth inning. Torero looks in, has his sign, and the 0 1 in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Sod Poodles baseball brought to you by Jimmy John's Freaky Fast, a proud partner of the Amarillo Sod Poodles. Who knows when this one ends? We might have time to go across the street and get a, a little Jimmy John's. The pitch grounded in on the hands. Merrill's got it. Shortstop to first base in time. And a 1 2 3 8 inning for Franco Torero. We head to the ninth inning. Northwest Arkansas 4, Amarillo 2 on the Amarillo Sound Poodles Radio Network. Fans, you know it, you love it. It's that time. It's Simba Cam. Hold him up. There's another one. A little bigger one. She looks happy. Bounce those babies. Rio 
of them. There we go. Oh, that's a long one. Perfect. There's a couple. She's cute. We'll take that. <laughs> We head to the ninth inning. Amarillo trailing four to two. Right-hander Carlos Belin back to work after a one, two, three, eighth inning. Stop Puddles baseball on the radio brought to you by B&J Welding Supply. Founding partner of the Amarillo Stop Puddles also brought to you by Happy State Bank. Get a financial home run with Happy State Bank. Find out how at happybank.com. Four to two. Amarillo trailing right-hander Tyler Zuber. Getting loose in the Northwest Arkansas bullpen, so it looks like Zuber will come on for the save chance in the bottom half of the ninth inning when Amarillo will have Potts, Van Gansen, and Overstreet do up. But now Belin trying to keep it a two run game. Amarillo down four to two, and the pitch. Check swing, called strike. 0 and 1. Fastball at 93. Featherston followed by Miller and Hutchins. Righty against Righty, 0-1. Check swing, looked like it went around, he did. 0-2. And, and Boleyn went to the slider at 85 that time. The outfield straight away. Series finale, if Amarillo wins, they take three of four. If the Naturals win, they'd get a series split. Salt Poodles a team in their last 23 games, 15 and 8. The 0 2, swinging a foul, straight back to it again at 0 and 2. Well, no doubt here in the month of July, Amarillo playing the best ball they've played as consistently as they've played all year. 0 and 2 as Belin looks in, has his sign, and the pitch. Swing and a miss, got him. That was a dandy, a slaughter that time by Belin. His second K. And the sixth strikeout tonight for Amarillo, number two for Belin. And he's looked very good, Paul. Absolutely. Great speed. And as you mentioned earlier, Sam, when Belin sets up, he takes a serious look in at the hitter. Crouches down, stares in, and sets. First pitch to Miller, who had the home run earlier. Misses away, ball one. Four to two, Amarillo trailing ninth inning. Day off tomorrow, seven game trip beginning in Springfield. On Wednesday, 1-0, low, 2-0. I uh, just got a text from my dad. He said, uh, remember to get snacks for the bus tomorrow. Zuo is away, ball three. Your folks had a good visit here. They did. A while back. They That's did, good. yes. Had a lot of fun. Went out to the Cadillac Ranch. We did not. We did go to Palo Duro. But okay. Hit up a lot of the good eateries yeah. in town. 3-0. In for a strike in the count, 3-1. and one. Well, were they impressed with the second largest canyon in the they country? They were. Had a very good, good. time. Three one swing ground ball over to second Miller's got it throws first in time four three put out and so far so good in this outing for Berlin five up and five down two away in the ninth inning. Well uh, my career from Michigan to uh, St. Louis to Corpus Christi to here in Amarillo, it has taken the uh, Levitt family to places I don't think they'd ever <laughs> thought they'd go. <laughs> Bill Income set, and the pitch is outside ball one. You know, keep, it? keep in mind, my dad gets up every morning, hops on the uh, Long Island Railroad, and goes to work in Manhattan every day. Oh, wow. And he's done that for 30-plus uh, years. 1-0. 
low, and the count now 2-0. Well, I bet they like the wide open spaces, they do. the beautiful they do. And sunsets. I, and I say that very lovingly about coming to Amarillo, <laughs> but I don't think uh, I don't think Jeffrey and Susan and Mikey, my brother, I don't think they uh, would have made it to Amarillo if mm -hmm. I had not been here. 2-0 in for a strike in the count, 2-1. So uh, they have, uh, they've they seen parts of the country. I don't think uh, a, uh, a family that is uh, New York born and bred would have ever seen. It was all fate, Sam. Yes, it was exactly. all fate. Had to come for the panhandle. 2-1, grounded towards Van Gansen. He's got it. Shortstop to first base in time. And a very good outing tonight for Carlos Belin. Six up and six down, a scoreless ninth inning. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Amarillo trailing 4-2. We'll see if the Saudis can rally when we come back on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. Now pitching for Northwest Arkansas, number 44, Tyler Zuber. And batting for your Sod Poodles, third baseman, number 10, Hudson Potts! Now the 19th consecutive sellout here in downtown Amarillo. They're hoping for a rally. Amarillo trailing 4-2 to two as we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Potts, Van Gansen, and Overstreet do up. Right-hander Tyler Zuber comes in, and the pitch taken inside. Little check swing. I think it got Potts' his bat or his body, and I guess it got his body. And Huddy walking down to first base, and here comes Daryl Kennedy. He can't believe it. He's barking at Jeff Gorman, and Huddy took a little check swing at it. Really tough to tell whether it got the knob or the handle of the bat, or if it got him. And now the umpiring crew, Jeff Gorman, Tyler Olson, Mike Carroll, will come together to discuss. And on that, it was tough to tell on the replay. But I'll tell you what, Jeff Gorman immediately signaled that it hit him, and it got the body of Huddy. So we'll see if this changes anything. And Daryl Kennedy came right out. Yeah, just tough to tell. And they do put yeah. Hudson Potts at first base. Well, that's that's tough for a field umpire to pick something like that up as far back as they were standing. If it got him, it just barely grazed it, it looks like. Well, this crowd of more than 6,500 making a lot of noise. And now the tying run will dig in in Peter Van Gansen. So here's PVG represents the tying run. Nobody out, bottom nine, Amarillo trailing four to two. Zuber comes set the pitch. Swinging a foul straight back on one. Zuber appeared last night, and he was not particularly good. He hit a batter, he walked a batter, and he allowed a two-run single. Now, he only got charged with one run, but now Zuber doing something that not a lot of guys do in the minors, and that's pitch back-to-back -back days. The 0-1, swing and a miss, blew it by him at 95, and the count 0-2 on Van Gansen. Series finale, homestand finale. Zuber comes set. And the 0-2. Upstairs, 94-1-2. Well, Amarillo put on a show with a bunch of comebacks early in this homestand. Only down Sue here in the ninth inning, but they need a rally. Potts a short lead. Held on by Castellano. His run means nothing. Van Gansen the tying run. 1-2 on the way, up and away, 94 again, 2-2. Two and two. By the way, we got a tweet in from a Coach Dodson on Twitter. He says, Uber drivers are listening, go Saudis. So to the uh, Uber drivers out there, we appreciate you tuning in. 2-2, two, two, swinging a high fly ball, right center, playable, Lee comes on. He's there, makes the catch, on the run, in the alley. One away, 
in the ninth inning. And it brings up Kyle Overstreet. Well, Sam, we remember Kyle's inside the park home run. Grand slam, as a matter of fact. So here is Overstreet. 0 for 3 tonight. Tying run Amarillo down 4 to 2, ninth inning. Pitch from Zuber. Swing and a foul. Fisted down the right field side, 0 and 1. Naturals getting two in the second, one in the fourth inning, one in the seventh. Amarillo got two on the Luis Torrens home run in the sixth inning. That's been it. Now the 0-1. Fastball low. One and one. Zuber 0-1. 2-6-1 ERA coming in. He's had five saves and six opportunities, making his ninth appearance here at Double A. So he has been, since he came up to Double A, the closer for Northwest Arkansas. Not yesterday, he was used. 1 1, swinging a little roller foul, third base side by the dugout. And the count now 1 and 2. Overstreet, four home runs in 2019. Has plenty of power. Hit nine in 2018. One, two, taken away. Fastball again, two and two. Zuber carefully toes that first base side of the rubber. A deep breath, looks in. Blue jersey, gray pants, a blue and brown glove. He comes set. 2-2, swing ground ball, slowly hit the shortstop. Merrill's got it, the second one. And Merrill lost it on the transfer and forced out at second base to Hudson Potts. He might have had a chance at turning two, but he clearly did lose it on the transfer to Featherston. And now two men away. Overstreet on first base. Amarillo down to their final out. And Buddy Reed coming up. Sam, on that play, it looked like Featherston didn't see that ball into his glove. It looked like he was eagerly anticipating making the throw to first, and he just took his eye off the ball and bobbled it, dropped it. So here's Buddy Reed. Final chance, Amarillo down four to two. Reed 0 for 3 tonight, couple of Ks. All those at bats against Brady Singer and Emilio Ogando. Pitch on the way to Buddy. Swing line drive, base hit. Taylor Colway, who came into pinch run for Overstreet up to second. A single for Buddy Reed, and now the tying runs on. And the winning run will step in in Rodrigo Orozco. So Colway, the pinch runner, on second base. And Buddy Reed, the single on first base. Here comes Naturals pitching coach Doug Henry. He'll talk it over with Tyler Zuber. Nobody warming up in the Northwest Arkansas bullpen. So right now, this is all at Tyler Zuber. Amarillo's got two on, tying runs on. The winning run will dig in in Orozco. Bottom of the ninth inning. Saad Poodles down four to two. Orozco has two home runs this year, 21 RBIs. He's been on all four times tonight. Three walks and a single. Digs in. 
great speed on the bases in Colway and Reed. Anything in the gap or down the line is going to tie this game. First pitch low and in ball one. Castillo on deck. I'm a little bit surprised that the Naturals outfield is not playing a little bit deeper. They're pretty much medium range. Now they back up a bit. But you got to be in no doubles defense here. 1-0. Swing ground ball foul. Down the first base side. 1-1. One and one. Colway has good speed. He'll score on a single. And Reed can fly. He would score on really anything that rolls in the alley or down the line. Amarillo trailing 4-2. Bottom nine. Zuber looks in. Orozco digs in. Switch hitter batting left. 1-1. One, one. And a breaking ball. Low and in. 2-1. and one. Slaughter that time. High drama here in this ninth inning. 2-1, up and away, 3-1. And, and a guy you don't want to face, Yvonne Castillo, looming. Poway on second, Reed on first, 4-2, ninth inning. Amarillo down to their final out. Zuber comes set. 3-1, up and away ball for he walked him. So now the tying runs in scoring position. The winning run on first base. And here comes Yvonne Castillo, who's riding an 18-game hit streak. He's 0 for 4 tonight. And he's got an opportunity not just to make it a 19-game streak, but to win this game with one swing. And that is a Roscoe's fourth walk of the ball game. So here we go. Yvonne Castillo, who leads all of double-A in hitting, came in batting 347, digs in. Switch hitter batting lefty. Colway on third, Reed on second, Roscoe on first base. Pitch on the way. Swing and a foul, straight back, 0-1. Big cut. Fastball at 96. Amarillo down 4-2. Two men away, ninth inning. The tying runs in scoring position. The winning run on first base. And now an extra base hit would likely win it. Great speed on all three bases. Zuber comes set. The 0-1. Breaking ball. Misses away. One and one. He went to the changeup. Castillo, the reigning Texas League Player of the Week. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a foul. Big rip by Castillo. And now the count, 1-2. and two. So now the Saudis down to their final strike. And all of the 6,500-plus here at Hodgetown on the edge of their seat. Now if there's one guy you want up here, this is it. It's Castillo. Base is loaded. Two men away. Zuber looks in. One and two. And here it comes. Swing and a looper. Left field coming on Burt. He won't get it. One run is in. Here comes Reed. He's in. A game tying two strike, two out single for Yvonne Castillo. And Amarillo has battled back. They've tied it at four here in the ninth inning. There was no other guy who wanted up, and Yvonne Castillo fights one into left field. Burt couldn't get there. Two runs come in, and this baby is tied up at four. And here is Edward Olivares now with a chance to win it. Orozco to third base, Castillo on first base. Pitch on the way, bunning, and it's caught 
Oh, what a play by Hutchins behind the plate. It's caught. Olivares went to bunt and trying to squeeze that winning run in. And Hutchins made a great play. It was popped up in the air just at home plate. And Hutchins made the play. But Amarillo does tie it on a base hit by Castillo. In the inning, two runs on, two hits, and two left on. We go to extras here in Amarillo. Four to four game as we go to the 10th inning on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. We head to the 10th inning. Amarillo getting a two-run game-tying single for Yvonne Castillo in that ninth inning. They tie up the game at four. David Bednar comes in. 10th inning, that means an automatic runner for Northwest Arkansas on second base. That will be Nick Hutchins who made the final out of the ninth inning. And it'll be Castellano, Burt, and Merrill. Nine, one, and two. Two up against Bednar who comes in. First pitch on the way, and a curveball in for a strike going one. Corners play in, Colway stays in the game, he's at first base. Bednar looking in, has his sign, and the 0-1, taken low, one ball, one strike. Now if you're just joining us, Amarillo trailed four to two. Heading into the ninth inning, they get a two-out, two-strike single. Brought in two by Castillo. By the way, that also extends his hitting streak to 19 games. 1-1. One, one. Swing ground ball over to short. Van Ganten's got it. Throws the first in time. Runner moves over. 6-3 put out. So Hutchins, the go-ahead run, now 90 feet away. And D.J. Burke coming up. Well, if you can manage to get out of this top of the inning with the game still tied, that just totally changes the complexion of this game. Because remember, Amarillo will have Edward Olivares who made the final out of that ninth inning. He'll be on second, nobody out to begin the bottom half of the 10th. Infield in, here's the pitch. Swing ground ball, picked up by Huddy. He flips it to home, and Torrance can't hold on. The run comes in. He slides in safely. Now, Potts had a good idea. He tried to flip it with his glove and get that runner at home plate. Torrens went up to get it. I'm not sure that Torrens would have been able to bring down the tag in time anyway, but that was really the only way that Potts was going to make that play. And the run comes in, so that will be an infield single for D.J. Burt. He'll get an RBI. Or actually, uh, we'll check on that. Nick Hutchins comes in. It is now a 5-4 game. So they do get that automatic runner in. Here's Merrill. And a throw to first and back in safely is D.J. Burt. They did give Burt a single and he will also get an RBI. His second tonight. Now here's the thing, Amarillo will have that runner on second base too. So this one a long way from over, but now a 5-4 Northwest Arkansas lead in the 10th inning. The pitch, low, Burt goes for second. He's in there, no throw. Stolen base for D.J. Burt. And now the mission for Bidnar, who gets an unearned run, is to keep it at a one-run game. Bidnar looks in. Has his sign. The pitch. Low and away. One ball, one strike. Or I should say, 2-0 and on Merrill. Five runs, ten hits, one error now for Northwest Arkansas. Four runs, six hits, no errors for Amarillo. Saudis once again showing great fight in that ninth inning. Zuo taken for a strike right down the middle at 94. And the count now two and one.
Merrill tonight, one for four at a triple back in the third. The pitch, grounded back to Bidnar, looks to run her back, throws the first in time. Nicely done by Bidnar. One three put out. And brings up Gabriel Canso. Well, look, in these extra innings, of course, you'd love to get through the inning with no runs across, but reality is that's the best thing. The second best thing is get through it with just that automatic runner coming in because, look, you're going to have good speed and Olvaris on second to begin your half of the inning. And also, you're the home team, so you start that inning with the winning run at the plate where one swing could win it. So giving up one run, not a huge deal. But you got to keep it at one. Here's Cancel, good hitter. Pitch is inside ball one. Burke, good speed on second. Bednar looking in. Bednar came in. 0-5, a 3-8-6-0 raise, 30th appearance. He has been the closer as of late. 1-0, wave and a miss. 1-1. One one. Got him on the splitter. Cancel tonight, who had a very good series coming in. He was 5-13 for 13 coming into this game. In this series, 0 for 4 tonight. One one, low, two and one, and away as well. By the way, final line tonight on Carlos Belin, two scoreless innings. He struck out two, allowed no hits and walked nobody. Very good. In fact, two perfect innings tonight in his second double-A appearance for Belin. And now Bednar trying to keep it a 5-4 game here in the 10th. Again, Amarillo will have Miller, Torrens, and Potts do up in the 10th inning with Olivares, the automatic runner. 2-1, rides in, 3-1. And, and seeing now two seasons worth of these extra inning games, I I'm just telling you, the difference between keeping it a one-run game and a two-run game is critical. To me, it changes the entire feel of the game. 3-1, mm -hmm. swing and a miss, way out in front. And now the count, three and two. Three and two as Bidnar looks in. Has a sign. And he brings it. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for David Bednar. And he gets out of the 10th inning with just that one run given up. In the inning, one run unearned against Bidnar on one hit. No errors, one left on. Bottom of the 10th inning we go. Naturals five, Sod Poodles four on the Amarillo Sod Poodles radio network. We go to the bottom of the 10th inning. Here in downtown Amarillo, Amarillo trailing five to four. Right-hander Grant Gavin comes on. Amarillo has their automatic runner on second base, and Edward Olivares in the winning run steps in and Owen Miller. It's Miller, Torrance, and Potts here in the 10th inning. Gavin comes on after Northwest Arkansas got one run in the top of the inning. First pitch is inside ball one. Miller tonight 0 for 3, reached on an error and scored a run. And this is the advantage of being the home team. And when you can get out of that top of the inning by just giving up that one run, the advantage is, is that you could win it with one swing. 1-0 in the dirt. 
And the count 2 0. Oh. Lavaris, very good speed. On third base, or I should say on second base. Putting the runner on second in these extra innings, that really creates some excitement. Well, creates excitement, and the real reason they did it was to shorten up the games, right? right. We're in a different era of minor league baseball. Gavin comes set, pitch to Miller. Up and in, and it hit him. And hopefully Owen's okay. He looks okay. He hops up. And he'll head down to first base. That was up and in at 92. And luckily, Owen Miller got enough out of the way where it didn't hit him in the head area. So he goes down to first base. And now the tying and winning runs on. And Luis Torrens, who has a home run tonight, will dig in. Alongside Paul Matney, Sam Levitt with you on the South Poodles Radio Network tonight. Amarillo trying to win this four-game series. They've got the winning and tying runs aboard. Nobody out, bottom of the 10th inning, where one swing, one extra base hit could win it. Torin squares around, first pitch, and he missed the bunt. I'm not sure if he got a piece or not, but the count and one either way. Well, you see the strategy there. They've got Potts and Van Gansen waiting in the wings, and Philip Wellman saying, hey, Luis, move the runners over, and then a base hit would win it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that Luis Torrens, this year certainly, and in his career, has been asked to bunt many times so let's see if it's still on he did not look particularly comfortable in that first attempt 0 and 1 and the pitch bunts it foul in the count 0 and 2 so now let's see what the count 0 and 2 will Torrens square around again Torrens was showing bunt all the way that time Brent Gavin, 5-3, and three, a 3-3-1 ERA's 29th appearance. Right-hander out of Parkville, Missouri. 0-2. Oh the pitch. Swing and a foul, not bunting. And you could assume that. He did not look very comfortable bunting the first two pitches, and we'll do it again at 0-2. Oh Owen oh 2 on Luis Torrens with Olivares on second. Miller on first base. 5 4 game. Amarillo down by one. Bottom half of the 10th inning. This is the seventh extra inning game that the Saudis have played this year. They've won two. And they have lost as the pitch comes in. This one lifted high in the air down the right field side. Out of play. To it again at 0 2. Correction this is the eighth extra inning game that Amarillo has played this year. They've won two, and they've lost five. They have had. As Gavin looks in, has his sign. Now the 0-2, up and in. And the count, 1-2. and two. Well, Amarillo looking for a walk-off win tonight. That's the way it's going to have to be tonight. Another sellout crowd, 19th consecutive sellout crowd. As Gavin looks in. Count 1-2 and two on Torrens, Potts on deck. One, two, swing, ground ball, foul. Ooh. Just a tad foul to the left of third base. Torrens just got out in front. 
The home plate umpire, Jeff Gorman, was right on it, looking down that third baseline. Amarillo, with an extra base hit, could win this game, and that was just a little bit foul. Not by a whole lot. Not much of an argument from Wellman. He was right there by the play. Saudis have three walk-off wins this year. You know, check that actually, four. Gavin looks in, has his sign. The pitch, fouled away, straight back, do it again at one and two. They've got four walk-off wins. There were three in May. There was the Potts two-run home run to win it. There was the Miller RBI single to win it. There was the Zunica two-run home run to win it. And then one in June on that second to last day of the first half, Taylor Colway with the walk-off hit. So they're looking for their fifth walk-off win here at Hodgetown to send the fans home happy. Gavin looks in, has his sign, one, two. In the dirt, and the count now two and two. Runner stay put, good stop by Hutchins. This is turning into a good at-bat here by Luis Torrens, who's behind 0-2. And now the count even at two and two. The outfield straight away, the infield back and straight up. Middle infielders, Featherston and Merrill at double play depth. Two, two, low, three and two. Well, if Torrens gets on, if Gavin throws the ball here, that would put the tying run 90 feet away and the winning run on second base with nobody out and Hudson Potts, who has been red hot, coming up. Three and two on Torrens. Let's see if Philip Wellman tries to do something here with a 3-2 count. Pitch on the way, up and in ball four. He walked him. So now Amarillo has the tying run 90 feet away. They've got the winning run on second base. Nobody out here in the ninth inning. And here comes Hudson Potts. Gavin is having to work on the mound out there. That's 13 pitches on just two batters. Fifth walk given up by Naturals pitching tonight. So here we go. 5-4 Amarillo trailing, bottom of the 10th inning. They've got the tying run 90 feet away. They've got the winning run on second base, nobody out. The infield comes in. Potts digs in the pitch. Swinging a foul straight back, 0-1. Potts tonight, 0 for 3. Hit by a pitch as well. He came in his last seven games batting 440 in those seven. He has been hitting bullets as of late. And he could win it with a base hit. Gavin comes set, 0-1, swinging a foul again straight back. Fastball at 92. And the count 0-2 on Huddy. Infield in. Potts, who has one walk-off hit this year, the home run back in May. Now the 0-2. Swing and a miss. He got him. Boy, he pulled the string, went to the slider at 84, and he got Potts on three pitches. So now one away. Middle infielders will back up. Daryl Kennedy, Northwest Arkansas manager, comes out. And let's see, will he go to the lefty, holding caps to face the lefty, Peter Van Gansen? He will. So Gavin out of the game, and now Caps will come in. He'll face the lefty, Van Gansen, with the bases loaded, one out, 
Bottom of the 10th inning, Amarillo trailing 5-4. to four. We'll step aside and be back in a moment. Don't go anywhere on the Amarillo South Poodles Radio Network. Bottom half of the 10th inning as Northwest Arkansas goes to left-hander Holden Caps here. With Peter Van Gansen coming up, the base is loaded, one out. Amarillo's got the tying run 90 feet away. The winning run on second base. And now Caps comes out, replacing Grant Gavin. So Daryl Kennedy going to the lefty-lefty matchup. 5-4 Amarillo trailing, bottom of the 10th inning. And uh, here we go, Paul Matney. Some high drama here in extras at Hodgetown. Absolutely. And the Saudis do have a flair for the dramatic. We've had some great finishes during this homestand. Amarillo looking for their fifth walk-off win of 2019. Caps looks in, second appearance of the series. Pitch to Van Gansen is away, ball one. This inning began the automatic runner, Olivares, on second base. Miller hit by a pitch. Torrens walked. Amarillo does not have a hit in this inning. Third baseman Rivera in. First baseman Castellano in front of the runner. 1-0, swing and a high fly ball, right field, backing up on it, Miller. This should side the game. Miller makes the catch, here comes Olivares. Owen Miller goes for third, he'll get there as Olivares scores. Sack fly RBI for Peter Van Gansen. And it sides this game at five here in the 10th inning. So now Miller to third base, the winning run. Torrens on first base, his run doesn't mean anything. But Van Gansen at least ties the game with a sack fly. And Paul, that's uh, exactly what you needed. You at least needed to get a fly ball to tie the game. And we're tied at five here in the 10th inning. Exactly. And he hit that ball deep to right field. And there was no attempt to throw the runner out at the plate. They were trying to make a play at third base. So here's Taylor Colway, winning run 90 feet away in Miller. The pitch is low ball one. Torrens runs up to second. That'll be defensive indifference. So Amarillo has tied this game at five in the 10th inning. Naturals get one in the top half. Amarillo gets one back here in the bottom half. Colway, who has one walk-off hit already this year, his first at-bat tonight. 1-0, and it's outside. Oh, on the outside corner, a strike, and the count now 1-1. One one. Remember, he came in to pinch run for Kyle Overstreet in that ninth inning. And now Colway getting his first at-bat of the night. Looks in for a sign. Caps come set. 1-1. One, one. Outside, two and one. Buddy Reed on deck. Miller leading off third base, the winning run. Two and one the count. And here it comes. Swing and a miss. And the count now two and two. Went low in the zone. A cutter that time. Two and two on Colway. Northwest Arkansas trying to get this thing to the 11th inning. Cap staring in. Dangling his left arm. Has his sign. 2 2. Swinging a foul left side. Lands somewhere on South Buchanan. And we'll do it again at two and two. Colway batting 256, three home runs, 17 RBIs, his first at bat tonight. 5 5 game, 10th inning. 2 2. 
Swing ground ball, left side, played by Merrill, comes in, throws on the run inside. And that is the inning. So Amarillo does get one run on no hits and two left on. We go to the 11th inning. Amarillo 5 and Northwest Arkansas 5 on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. We go to the 11th inning. Amarillo and Northwest Arkansas side at 5 on this Monday night. In downtown Amarillo, right-hander David Bednar stays on. Automatic runner for the Naturals is Gabriel Cancel. So, Naturals get a run in the top of the inning. And Amarillo gets a run in the bottom half of the inning, in the 10th. It is a not cancel. It is Nick Heath at second base. Khalil Lee digs in, pitch low, ball one. So a, a pinch runner for the automatic runner. So Heath at second base, who has very good speed. Not very good, has great speed. Lee digs in. 1-0 from Bednar, swing ground ball towards the middle, backhanded by Miller, throws on the run in time. 4-3 put out. Cancel, or I should say Heath up the second. And it brings up Emmanuel Rivera. So again, the key here is trying to get out of this inning. With no runs given up, keeping it side, Amarillo will have their automatic runner. It will be... Taylor Colway on second base in the bottom half of the 11th inning. So Bednar can get out of it. It's huge. If he can give up one run, that's kind of second best. Pitch on the way. Swing line drive beyond Potts down the left field line. Rolling towards the corner. Heath comes in to score. Orozco digs it out. And on its second with an RBI double is Emmanuel Rivera. And Northwest Arkansas has played their automatic runner in the top of the 11th inning. Naturals now take a 6-5 lead. That is the fourth hit tonight. And the first RBI for Emmanuel Rivera. Gives Northwest Arkansas a 6-5 lead and again, well, now the key becomes for Bednar. Keep it at one. Taylor Featherston digs in. First pitch fouled straight back, 0-1. And, and 0-1. Swing and a foul, straight back again, 0-2. Well, you saw the importance of keeping it one run in that 10th inning. With Amarillo just getting the run of the sack fly by Van Gansen. Could not get anything more, but that essentially meant that Amarillo had a chance to tie the game with that sack fly. Bidnar looks in. Featherston digs back in. And the pitch. Swinging a high pop-up. First base side drifting foul. And the count 0-2. No! Featherston tonight has an RBI double, fielder's choice. He's flew out, he struck out. Now the 0-2, swing and a miss, or no, Featherston got a piece. Just got it off the end of the bat. Count stays 0-2. Still a very good portion of this crowd here on a Monday night. 11th inning, getting late. 0-2 on the way. Fastball missed off the outside. Torin shaking his head. You can't believe that Bidnar did not get the call from home plate umpire Jeff Gorman. One and two.
Ben Nauer grew up in the Pittsburgh area, went to D1 Lafayette. Sets at the letters. And the pitch. Swing, looper into shallow left center. Coming on to Roscoe, nobody gets it. Reed picks it up. Around third base comes Rivera, and he's in standing. Now it hung up there for a bit, but neither Orozco nor Reed could get it. It is a single for Featherston. RBI for him, and now two runs in in this 11th inning. And Northwest Arkansas has taken a 7-5 lead. Luis Torren stood in front of the plate for a bit, and I think he was uh, still upset about the no strike three call the pitch before up. First pitch upstairs, ball one to Miller, who had a home run all the way back in the second. That feels like an eternity ago. Now 7-5 Naturals lead. They're up by two here in the 11th inning. The pitch, bouncer, right side, Miller's got it, and he can't make the play. Nicks off his glove, he fielded it to his side, had to hurry against the speed of Miller. That was a tough play for Miller, but I think one that Owen will tell you he should have made. So up to third base goes Taylor Featherston. Yet to get a ruling on whether that was a hit or an error. And they do give Miller an error. And Nick Hutchins digs in. The pitch. Bunning. And a good one up the first base side. Colway picks it up. He'll tag out the runner. Run comes in as they squeeze home a run and a safety squeeze. Eight to five now. A three run 11th inning for the Naturals. So good heads up play from the Naturals and Daryl Kennedy get another run in. They're now up by three. Miller to second base. So the automatic run, Rivera and Featherston have all scored. And Castellano, 0 for 4 tonight, digs in. Now a three run game, Naturals leading. And it will be a tough task for Amarillo in their half. The pitch. Inside ball one. Fastball at 94. Bednar has his sign. 1-0. And a breaking ball. Settles in a strike one and one. Well, here's the thing. All that Amarillo will need to do to get that tying runs to the plate in the bottom half of the 11th is get one base runner on. And they've got Reed followed by Roscoe and Castillo. Top of the order coming up. 1-1. One, one. Swing, line drive into center. Reed comes on. He's there, makes the catch. The inning over, but a big one for the Naturals as they get three runs. In the 11th inning, they get him on two hits, one error, and one left on. We go to the bottom of the 11th, Naturals 8, Sod Poodles 5, on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network. Amarillo down 8 to 5 as we go to the bottom half of the 11th inning. Buddy Reed. Rodrigo Orozco and Yvonne Castillo do up. Automatic runner on second base is Taylor Colway. And so Amarillo giving up three runs in the top of the 11th inning. And now they'll try to tie it or win it in the bottom half. Here's Reed, pitch, 
Swing and a high fly ball. Left field down the line. In the corner is Burt still going, and he runs out of room. That one was up there for a good while, and it lands in the patio area down that left field side, 0-1. And, and that was a lucky break for Amarillo that it did get out of play, and Burt did not have a play on it. Reed one for four. A run scored tonight. Now they've got the top of the order coming up. It's funny, a long way from over. 0 oh, 1, swing and a miss. 0 oh, 2. Caps going to the changeup that time. Amarillo, remember, trailed 4 to 2. Heading into the bottom of the ninth inning. They got a two run game tying single from Castillo. In Northwest Arkansas, got a run in the 10th inning. Amarillo got one back by Van Gansen on the sack fly in the bottom half. And then the Naturals scoring three in the 11th. The 0-2 swung on and missed, strike three. So Reed down on strikes, and there's one away here in the bottom half of the 11th. Sam, we're getting to see a lot of that uh, Northwest Arkansas bullpen tonight. Six pitchers, I believe, for them. Caps is the sixth. It's been Singer for six, Agondo for one, Torero for one, Zuber for one, Gavin for a third, and Caps. And now on in the 10th and the 11th. First pitch low and in ball one. To Rodrigo Orozco has been on all five times tonight. He's walked four times and he's singled. Castillo, Olivares, the big boys coming up. 1 0. He is taken low and in. And the count now 2 0. Outfield straight away, infield back. Colway leading off second. Caps looking in. 2-0. Fastball, belt high strike. 2-1. Well, Amarillo is never in this inaugural campaign. Played a game into the 12th inning. The pitch. In for a strike and the count now 2-2. Two and two. They would love an opportunity to do that here tonight, but they've got to score at least three here in the 11th. Caps looks in. Orozco digs back in. 2-2 two -two on the way. Check swing, take in, low and in. Three and two. Remember, all it would take is Orozco getting on, and then Castillo, who's a switch hitter as well, would represent the tying run. So this is a big pitch coming up here. Caps looks in, brings the ball into his mitt. The pitch, swing, ground ball towards the middle of base hit. Colway around third. He'll come in, picked up by Lee. Rodrigo Orozco, an RBI single. Now an 8-6 game. And Ivan Castillo will dig in, representing the tying run. Todd Poodle's not going down quietly here in this 11th. And Rodrigo Orozco has been on all six times tonight. Four walks and two singles, now an RBI as well. So here's Castillo, the tying run. Olivares waiting on deck. The pitch, swing, line drive, foul. Down the right field side, 0-1. 8-6 ball game, Northwest Arkansas getting three in the 11th inning. Now Amarillo getting one back in the bottom half. Castillo now representing the tying run. Olivares, the big boy, waiting on deck. 0-1, low, 1-1. One one. Now we set it. Throughout the weekend, Paul, that this team showed great fight in the comebacks against Springfield. First two nights of this series. 1-1. One, one. 
Swing and a miss. Fastball low in the zone. Blew it by him. 94 miles an hour. One and two. They're trying to come back again. They've already done it once tonight. Trying so, to come back again here in this 11th. And I think we've witnessed that these comebacks and fighting back uh, is becoming a, a characteristic of this ball club. We've seen it too often to not think it is. One, two, in the dirt, two and two. Right-hander Andrew Beckwith getting loose in Natural's pin. But he just started throwing. He has not been throwing very long. So I don't think he's going to be ready if Olivares would come up. Castillo digs back in. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Got him upstairs at 93. Two men away here in the 11th. And now it's left up to Edward Olivares, who will again represent the tying run. So here's Olivares, the pitch he is up and away ball one. Olivares tonight, two hits. He scored a run. This is his sixth plate appearance of the night. Here in the 11th inning, Amarillo trailing 8-6. Orozco on first base, held on by Castellano. Pitch on the way. Up and in, and the count now 2-0. Owen Miller on deck. And now here comes Doug Henry, the Northwest Arkansas pitching coach, to talk with Holden Caps. And part of this might be to let Beckwith get looser in that bullpen if the plan is to bring him in to potentially face Miller. the video board under the big Hodge down sign in left center telling the fans to make noise they do as they're told Olivares in the driver's seat at 2-0 the set and the pitch in for a strike 2-1 Olivares who is tied for the Texas League lead 16 home runs leads the league in RBIs with 65 coming in 2-1, swing, ground ball, left side, base hit. Aras go up to second, Olivares on first base. Now the tying runs on, and the winning run will dig in, and Owen Miller, the Saudi's not done yet. And a three-hit night for Edward Olivares. So Miller, who has plenty of power, nine home runs, could win it with one swing. Bottom 11. Amarillo down by two, eight to six. The tying runs on. The winning run at the plate, the pitch. Swing, high drive, left field, way back. It is gone. Oh, oh, oh. Are oh, you my. kidding me? Oh. Owen Miller wins it. A walk-off three-run homer. And the San Poodles come back again. They're going crazy at home play. Bouncing up and down on Owen Miller as he wins it in the bottom of the 11th <laughs> inning with a walk-off three-run oh. homer. Amarillo wins it 9-8 to eight in 11 innings here in downtown Amarillo. And the comeback kids are back at it again. Sam, you set it up. You said what could happen with Miller at the plate. And it did happen. Unbelievable. He wins it with one swing. And the Saad Poodles who trailed in the ninth inning. They trailed in the 10th inning. 
They trailed in the 11th inning. They win it on a walk-off three-run home run by Owen Miller right to the left of bar 352. And the Sod Poodles get a 9-8 win in 11 innings here at Hodgetown. Maybe the swing of the year. The final score, Amarillo 9, Northwest Arkansas 8 on the Amarillo Sod Poodles Radio Network.